is my world. Let's make it count. I must practice stories. Next, GSL Season 2. Renaissance. 2019 Mountain Dew GSL Season 2. Codex Renaissance. Right here, right now. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another day here at the GSL Codex. And we got a very unusual lineup of players today. This is not what you would expect to have in a GSL group in 2019. Yeah, we have two very good pro gamers and a couple of up-and-comers named Dark and Cure. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of new kids on the block. So that's going to be a lot of fun. By the way, we're doing KSL Thursday and Friday, but we'll be back to do the last group in the GSL Codex for the round of 32. Uh, we have been powering through everything StarCraft related for the last two weeks, Artosis. Yeah, look at all of these results. We've had so many upsets so far. Very few Zergs have made it through as well, which is kind of this interesting storyline that's occurring. Of course, two are playing tonight. We'll see if anyone can make it. Uh, it's a crazy group, though. As you can see, we have no idea what year we're in right now. And it's not just because of parting glasses. It's because Party and DRG are both <laughs> playing in the GSL. <laughs> the parting glasses jokes are so funny. <laughs> I love he knows him about so your much. jokes with that, too. Oh, Did you know, know he know. told me? I know. He's, he's, he's like, you think these glasses are funny? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. <laughs> Anyways, I, I, like got, I got here today, right? And I walk into the makeup room. And immediately I see MC, I'm like, oh, MC, how are you doing? Oh, congrats and everything. And then Parting walks in behind me. I turn around and Parting's like, hey, how's it going? I'm like, what year are we in right now? <laughs> Is this 2012? What's, what's going on? Yeah. I'm talking to MC and Party at the same time. And now DRG's here as well. Oh, life God, is good. It's, it's so crazy. good to see DRG again, too. This really, ooh, dopamine flooding into my brain as all these happy memories of DRG playing are coming back. But let's make one thing very clear here. Dark is expecting to get out of this group, Artosis. Well, how many GSLs does he want? I don't see any gold medals oh, right there. Dan! He's a great gamer anyways. <laughs> yeah, he is a great gamer. Uh, and definitely one of our uh, guys that we're always expecting to go deep. In fact, we've been expecting to win GSL for years now. And it just I know. It has not occurred. Him and SOS, it just keeps happening. I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just funny. There's some of these players don't. Pro I mean, they can get deep in a tournament, but they don't win these um, you know, multi-month tournaments, as everybody calls them. <laughs> yeah. That's what we're always talking about, the multi-month multi tournaments on the pylon know. show. He's not as much of a multi-monther. Yeah. But look at this guy right here, okay? That's a serious e-gamer right there if I ever saw one. For a second, I thought he had like the biggest turtleneck on ever, but turtleneck that was just gonna slowly swallow his entire head up, Artosis. Nah, he's, he's using that to keep his jaw up. Yeah. Because his jaw is gonna hit the floor. <laughs> when he just wrecks this group and rises, he's still the greatest Zerg in the world. That you still don't have to go over Muta Roach. He uh, just finished his military service, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Wow. He's doing pretty well on the Korean ladder overall. Here he is in Code S. It's a big deal. I mean, this is one of the truly legendary Zergs of all time. This guy was one of the first big macro Zergs that we ever had. So, I mean, I'm excited. He was the transitionary point between ST and macro. That's true. All right, game one is ready. Map uh, first map is going to be New Repugnancy, Dark versus DRG. <laughs> How afraid Dark is right now, he's just cheesing. He's like, oh my god, it's DRG. It's DRG. He knows how to macro. Go Sue Crew. Duck. MLG! Oh, it's the MLG champion. I'm afraid. I'm gonna I'm gonna cheese him. I'll never forget what he did in New York at MLG. He totally no scope 360 him. <laughs> Africa S2. 
Dongregu. What was that? There was like something. MLG, the, the term MLG was used for something back in the day, and I can't quite remember, but it was like some sort of meme type of so thing. So there was, uh, well, the, the term, because MLG is, you know, how old is MLG actually? When uh, did that start? It's super old. Like, uh, I think it was maybe 2004 ish, but I, I could be off on that. And they started on Xbox, right? They started on Xbox? On Halo. Uh, I think Halo was, the the, I mean, that's one? their first very popular game. I bet you it was their first game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went um, to an MLG in 2005, so I know they were around before then. They, um, I believe they were in the consoles originally. Um, for sure. We actually have a bunch of friends that worked or still work at or, 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 work, or were working at MLG. But uh, I, I just don't know the exact history. But uh, there was a term, yeah, like it was just, you'd say MLG if there was some insane play. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> it actually is really funny. It is funny. Yeah. It is funny. Uh, so here is the links coming now. The drones are being pulled. Yeah. DRG going to so, try to defend this as best he can. So we're seeing a once again, you know, this kind of ridiculously quick a Ling Baneling attack. Um, now, if they don't go Banelings. Uh, then pulling drones can be very good. If they do go banelings, then pulling drones is straight up wrong because you can't actually fight. You have to fall back. So the way that DRG is playing this right now, he just, he okay, he has vision of banelings. He should turn around now. He really should turn yeah, around Yeah, those now. drones There's are still out here. The amount that there is no point to be attacking with drone ling against baneling ling is large. Ooh. It is a large amount of no point. The queen is wedged in between the extractor and the um, uh, the minerals to try to get a little bit more surface area. There's no banes out now. There's two more being made adjacent to the main here. Hell, it's pretty good hold so far. That's yeah. going to take a little bit for that spine crawler to root itself. Mm -hmm. like there's an opportunity here for Dark. He's definitely got to get something done. If DRG just straight holds like this, that's going to be amazing. OK, well, that's a lot of lings getting in. Yeah. But again, right now it's two hatches versus one, and uh, frankly, I think DRG's handled this pretty gracefully here. Yeah, is he going to be able to continue uh, this though? Like, Dark is continuing to pump the lings and make banes and whatnot, so I don't see two queens on the ramp. Okay, finally, two queens on the ramp. Look at that, and he's got a spine down at the bottom. Maybe, maybe. Let's see. Oh, that's a problem. Ooh. Nicely done. Not too many of those drones bruised here. I think we're beginning to see the end of this rush. Or actually, no, we're not. We have more banelings being made just outside the uh, the main here. But again, no drones are down here. No lings are down here. I mean, with the spine and the queen, those are not good targets to have for the banelings. Yeah. Unless you were winning so badly, it didn't matter. We're not in that moment yet. Continuing to pump out lings right now. Another spine is on the way. I think that that is definitely a good, good okay. call there. So using the banes to target down the uh, the uh, spine crawler, so this way you can fish the uh, you know queens down the ramp, and it looks like he's actually going to get up here. Nice transfuse. One queen goes down. Yeah, good micro from DRG overall. Uh, it does end up losing those two queens, and that. Oh wow, I'm pretty surprised actually that he did not go in and detonate on the drones to make yeah. them very easy to kill. But keeping that that bane alive. Oh, that oh that would have been a great detonation as well. Yeah. Well, all these are going to be very low on HP. Now, one queen is going to go down. I don't know how much HP is on the rest of these drones. Right now, it's 13 workers to 12. So they're basically even. So we haven't had this rush do enough damage. But of course, it's hard to deal with Ling Bane when you don't have any Banes of your own. Well, he's got Speedlings now. So if he can just utilize his greater production to push everything back, that should be enough for him. That should get him into a good position. OK, he sees where those Banes are being morphed. He's about to have more Banes out. We're closer to his base, so we can get that rally down more quickly as well. No secondary queen on the way. OK, again, uh, with the quicker lings, he could try to circumvent the Bane lings, but eventually the Banes are going to come close enough that he has to uh, take one or two of his own lings and then ha dive in on the remaining Bane lings to try to get rid of them. Yeah, Bane lings kind of forcing their way up the ramp here. Uh, it feels a little bit inefficient, like uh, Bane ling uh, being picked off that quickly. Dark continuing to try to get up there and kill drones. They're even on drones now. 
Don't forget, DRG was up in drones for a very long time. Oh, that's a very low bane lane. Oh, oh my, my god, god it's still drone. alive! That's insane. That's so crazy. Well, that's oh, a big hit. Oh, man, now, these drones are so low. I think that's a tipping point. There it is. GG. Dark takes game one. Beautifully yeah. done. Wow. Okay, so it, it was very impressive that DRG almost ended up holding that, but I think if they go bane lane, I don't know. I guess it, it, probably some Zerg Pro Gamers could tell me what they think about that, but I I feel like if they go bane lane and you're fighting with Ling Drone, like there's no real chance of holding your natural hatchery if they want to kill it. Yeah. Uh, I, I feel like DRG should have backed up taken the hatchery loss and played with a higher drone count and a slightly later natural than his opponent here. But do, you, do you think that build at all by Dark was a sign of disrespect? No, I think that he just thought he could out control this, this old fogey, this dinosaur. Yeah, yeah it, it's been a while since DRG's played a professional game on stage. Why not uh, open up very aggressively? It sets the tone for the rest of the match. I wouldn't be surprised if Dark was aggressive again, to be honest, Artosis. I think it's... Uh, could Served be. him well so far. Could be. DRG, a legend from the past in StarCraft, is back after completing his military service right now. Down 0-1 versus Dark. Uh, modern, one of the best Zergs there is here as we go into game two on Port Alexander. <laughs>
And we've had a few since then, Roro, Sulky, uh, et cetera. Roro is one of the tougher ones to remember. I think a, that a lot of people A lot of people forget, forget about Roro. Yeah. Beating Symbol. Uh, remember Symbol? Yes. That guy was like solar before solar was solar. Yes. <laughs> it's so true. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, these are, these are important people. Sniper. Remember Sniper? Sniper, who Champion. then became a Heroes of the Storm pro. Yeah. He was a, a top, top, top end Heroes of the Storm pro. He was like the best Zagara player. Yeah. The Zerg Queen, literally. It was so funny to see that. He was played that hero almost every game when I was still casting that game. Uh, but yeah, DRG, a legendary figure. Such a great macro player. Kind of uh, wasn't a Hive Tech type of guy, though. Really macroed Roaches very well. Loved Mutalisks. Loved counterattacking and things like that. I'm excited to see what a longer game looks like. Look at this. Okay, so this is pretty pretty cool what we're seeing. Melee going up to layer. A one ling hidden over there in the main yeah. scout. That's, that's going to be good to check what's going on later on. That is nice. Uh, DRG now moving up to the top, but so far Dark's been able to block him off at every turn. I'm excited about this melee attack upgrade. That's really cool. Ooh, nice placement. Yeah. That queen. Roach Warren starting here for both sides. But it looks like now Dark has managed to move out. He's going to get a surround here on this queen, be able to take nice, that out easily. Nice. Not bad. Going to pick off this Baneling before hatch. Oh, a little bit of a mistake there for oh, sure. It's starting to heat up here. I think Dark wants to go do a lot more damage. Yeah, and he might end up getting that as well. A lot oh, of drones man. in here. Oh. oh, that would be quite the connection. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. That man. Uh, DRG shaking his head in his booth actually. Super painful. Yeah. He's not in a booth, but yeah, I get your meaning. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I just keep going to booth. We used to have booths long ago, guys. Um DRG shaking his head shaking in his the head airplane that he's as flying. He sits in his Jeep that he's also driving right now. <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, that, that, he that's... drives a Hummer tasteless. I yeah, don't know where yeah. you're getting these ideas. <laughs> okay, that is a lot of Zerglings coming in. Just too much damage. It's just I too think, much. Though. Yeah, I mean, he yeah. killed uh, so many workers. Uh, oh, I'm sad because this well, was this was a very cool style he was showing here as well, getting the plus one melee and going into Mutas. I mean, even if DRG dies here, it's not going to be the end uh, of him today. And certainly not the end of him in the future. If you can get to a GSL code S, I think it just might take. One or two more times before you can really compete. Well, I, I think for Nostalgia's sake anyway, the only thing people want to see is uh, partying against DRG, you know? Mm. Let's get some very uh, older players going at it. Yeah, I'd be fine with that. Now, uh, DRG's not out of this game yet. It seems like the rush has basically stopped. We saw some of those roaches there for Dark actually turning around. The problem is that Dark is ahead in every way imaginable. Um, he has more workers. He's got a better tech, actually. He's uh, he doesn't got have more spires. Army. Yeah, that's true. He's down one spire. <laughs> now uh -oh. there's eight mutas coming here for DRG, but is this going to work? Wow! And there's a Nidus network being made. He's going to pop a Nidus right over there as those mutas are going across mm. the map. That's going to be hard to hold off. A bunch of queens popping out. There's just not going to be that much for DRG, especially because he's redroning at this time. So he's not even getting to make a bunch of bunch of lings. I love that he's going plus two melee, by the way. This is so fascinating. Uh, plus two banelings obviously can one hit drones. And I also wonder if there's some possibility that he wanted to go with this tech uh, a little bit higher. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm very interested in what he's trying to do. It's just he's not going to get to do it. The game's going to end before then. <laughs> Oh, looks like DRG is going to get over here, and unfortunately for him, he cannot deny that Nidus that has now popped out. And this wave that's going to push to the south here is going to be way too much. Already, DRG is evacuating his drones over okay. to the second base. Yeah, I think if he throws up a bunch of spines, he may be able to hold on here. A nice little counterattack there. He's doing what he can with what he's got. Oh, I love this uh, leapfrogging of the Nidus networks. Yeah. <laughs> This base definitely going to be going down. The, the Muta's counterattack and hitting the Nidus is one way to, to try to slow this down, but... Uh, yeah, the Muta's, I mean, they. I guess they buy a little bit of time. I'm not sure what the game plan is for winning this game for DRG is the problem. Like, he, I think there's definitely a world in which he can hold on his natural for quite a while, but it's, it's hard to imagine how he can... Well, I guess a move like this is a start, right? 
How can he continue to hold after that? Yeah, I mean, he's just going to get run over, right? Uh, you would think so. It, maybe he can actually hit a critical mass of mutas where he actually just kills the queens, though. You know, if he I, makes enough spines, if you hit that critical mass and kill the queens, I think the possibilities uh, open up a little bit more because it's only queens. And once you kill the first group of queens, if you still have a good amount of mutas left over, that can be a snowballing effect. So it's not like he's going up into hydras. Man, this is tough because you could see that uh, even if DRG holds this off, he's behind in a base. Zerg's not really losing that much if they don't end the game immediately. But right now you have a Zerg uh, over here for DRG that's smothered. Economically, he can't go anywhere. These meters are supposed to be... Oh, 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 oh! He's clowning him now. This is so savage. Yeah, he needs to go after the... This is the perfect time to go in and try to kill the Queens, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. That's... That is a lot of Crocibile. Oh my god, I can point you He needs to make exactly enough Ravagers so that he can one-shot the hatchery with just one round of Crocibiles. We have to get so close to that hatchery for that. GG. Okay, uh, that was a little bit one side as well, but it really came down to the early Link Bane aggression. Uh, DRG being 2-0'd very quickly by Dark. Dark making a statement about what year we were in. Listen, Jumanji, calm down. <laughs> Okay. Listen, Jumanji. Yeah. God, that was a movie that did not need to be remade, by the way. How many Jumanjis have oh, there no, been? Oh, no, the new Jumanji's really good. Oh, is it good? It's actually really good. There's, like, a couple problems with it. They made the best gamer in the school way too handsome. That was wrong. That betrayed my childhood. The way you're looking at me is so weird right now. <laughs> you're like, it should have looked like me, Taysom. Yeah. We got to go to a break, guys. <laughs> we come back. Cure versus Party. We'll be right back.
2019 Mountain Dew GSL Season 2. Codex. Do the do. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to go to Pure versus Parting. That's right. Parting. He's also in our group. Yeah. Our blast from the past. He did very well in the Super Tournament. So I'm not sure if he can get through this group. This is actually a very hard group. Dark and Cure are both very, very good players. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, Parting definitely can win a PVT. That's for sure. Here, of course, the uh, second best Terran. <laughs> you know, <three> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was just thinking about Maru as I watched that video that was playing, uh, where it just shows like all the last few GSLs, and it's like all these Maru victories in a row. I thought of like a new nickname for him. We just call him Yggdrasil, the world tree, because... <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Mar what is it called? <laughs> Yggdrasil. 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 <laughs> it's in North Mis North uh, uh, Norse mythology. It's the World Tree, okay? Yggdrasil. Right? So he's the World Tree, basically, for Terran, right? And all Terrans are just, like, fruits that fall off of him and stuff, right? The World wow. Tree has been destroyed. We're in a time of chaos now. It's going to be someone else's turn now, as the song says. <laughs> I love it when you use a term and you just say it as if it's common knowledge. You, you don't know? know what Yggdrasil is? No, Seriously? No. It's also the Overlord hero from StarCraft 1. You didn't know really? the Overlord hero Yggdrasil? That's a well-named That's a well -named Overlord hero. Yeah, they all are. Mobo, Damn. Yggdrasil. I mean, come on. <laughs> you ever see, tr try to see uh, Mobo kill Why? a thousand health Yggdrasil? Why are you so funny today? I'm not ready for this. We're not even warmed up yet. We're like 30 minutes into this broadcast. Okay, Port Alexander for game one. This is Cure versus Parting. The new versus the old. Well, he's not that new. The kind of, well, you know, he's been around versus the old. Okay, are we gonna have a rush here from Parting? Yeah. <laughs> Better believe it. Next question. <laughs> Jin Air Green Wings, Cure. Come 
think Parting's going to probably do a full wall. So we are on Port Alexander, and you can do a full wall here, which is perfect for his type of style. Player one, Parting. Parting's got the glasses of a, a woodshop teacher. No, that's a driver ed teacher. That's the glasses Could be of a driver's, driver's ed, ed if teacher. I, if I had to wear glasses, I think I'd get a pair of those, though. Well, you can't now because then we just be like, oh, wow, you're really cool trying to look like parting tastes. <laughs> Big old white guy with a beard trying to look like parting. Like, Come on. <laughs> okay, gateway out here and a cybernetics core. It's the full wall. wall. Yeah, full wall there. Let's see if he uh, texts any further than this. Three probes on gas. So we could see. Proxy pond with the Stargate or something like that. It's definitely possible. We've got one probe heading up to the north. It looks like it's going to go up there and hide something. I do want to mention, by the way, Kira. Kira was looking pretty strong last season overall. A lot of people were teasing me because I was saying how good he was playing and he lost, as if people can't play well and lose the games, which is probably the dumbest thing anyone could ever <laughs> think. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> can you imagine that? Like, well, the only reason Mario won all those GSLs is because everyone lost them, which means they're bad and the games are bad. It's the only like, thing that's no. better than that is saying, well, this guy just wanted it more. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I think that Cure is really close to being a very top tier Terran, like entering within that realm that Gumiho has, has ventured into, you know? I think he's really close. Wow, the proxy robot gets found immediately. And this is a full wall. Uh, we have a unit on the map. It's going to have to come over here. Yeah, it's a, he almost adapt. didn't get the Robo up there, by the way. The Reaper spotted it, barely got that up in time. Yeah, if you don't get it, uh, get it up and going, then you have to like kill a pylon to get a probe out there. It just becomes terrible, so you, it's not going to happen. Okay. So, he's actually going to let the Shade finish, I bet you. No. Lots of aggression coming out. Not real damage done as of yet. Nope, yeah, just bruising some SCVs. Um, nice, nice micro there by parting. But things are going to pick up pretty quickly here. The Robo's just now finished the first War Prism's being made. Ooh, that was a good bounce. Yeah, very nicely done. <coughs> War Stalkers are coming up. It looks like the um, the Natural is actually being evacuated, but as I say that, Terran's going to push down here and try to remove the Adept himself. He's got five kills already. Yeah. There's some Prisms coming out right now. It's a little bit scary. See what Kira is going to do to defend against this. I imagine he's just going to go into Cyclone and try to hold on. Okay, when he sees this, I think you got to back up. Play a really turtly game right here. Oh, it's a siege tank actually. Okay, that makes sense. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so we can start to elevator these up here. This is scary. We've got more gates that are done. Um, and keep in mind, uh, this is going to be tricky. I mean, you know, as we all know, the War Prism is a very abusable unit, and this rush is. You can see Barry Taylor to exploit the Terran. Oh, my God! Wow. I can't believe you wow. lost that. He had to start another one. Yeah, and now the, I mean, the, the Stalkers I, just can't be microed nearly as yeah, well. I, I actually, I, <laughs> I didn't even bother to mention that the Marines were going to shoot at the uh, War Prism because I thought for sure he was going to get it away because that's the most important unit in the rush. Yeah. Um, so losing that linchpin unit is huge. And... Oh, man. They're on similar workers right now, but I think that, that is not something that matters too, too much. Uh, it's it's two command centers, so you're just going to get ahead from here. Harding yeah. continuing to go on. Look at this. He's shading in, getting a bit of damage, but going twilight at the same time. Now, I, I got to point out here, um, you know, there was probably, there would have been Immortals made back there that uh, would have been able to help with this rush, but uh, he's going to end up losing that Robo, too. It's not even powered right now. I don't see any probes out on the map to try to get over there. Um, still, though, Parting's going to be able to do a little bit more damage as he continues to unload and hit these different locations. Yeah, he's got to keep the Prism alive this time, and I think he will. It's just so, so important. Look at this. Reducing the Marine count slightly. Good moves. You know what's funny is if that gets stuck, he has to recall it, then send it back across the map. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there's the Dark Shrine. Yeah. Siege tank and siege mode over there makes it basically impossible to come in here and do any damage. And there's another siege tank over here, although not much else to defend. Um, I guess actually he has enough Marines if those come <laughs> down. He can drive that away too. So I think this rush is basically ended. 
Well, it'll continue with the Dark Shrine. We'll see what type of damage he can muster with that. Uh, but when you look at this, right, he's continuing to kill some SCVs. They're about even on workers after after everything is said and done. Obviously, a bit more tech uh, for for Cure. And he's got the double production already right now. So that's very important. Yeah, this is uh, unfortunate, the, the beginnings of this. Again, losing that robo like that, parting that, that hurts. Um, oh, no. Oh, he's going to take some more damage here. He's got to get away from that Cyclone. That Dark Shrine's going to be done. Can he do any more, though? That's the big question. Oh, how funny. Yeah, I guess yeah, he can do that. Cute. I kind of forgot that's possible, but yeah. It seems like a never-ending cycle. Produce a War Prism to power the, <laughs> the Robo, right? <laughs> yeah. Man, that's a circle, taste. It's a full circle. <laughs> now the Observer's not quite done. There's a second one that's it's okay. He'll up. go back and get it done later. Yeah, yeah. Oh! 1DT goes down. But in the main, there's a scan available, by the way. Oh, wow. He's going for it. DT's working together. Good pickup. Yeah, Keeping Terran yeah, very nice. occupied. Again, it's been do cured nothing but defending this entire time. Zealot Legs is about 10 seconds out. Parting is up right now in workers. Yeah, he's actually done a great job. I guess so. In kind of an unusual game, but now it's even four more gateways coming down. There's not been a third command center made, right? There isn't. No, no, he doesn't have a third command. Okay. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this war prism's gonna have to go now that this Viking's out. There's no way you can stay present over there. Do you remember that time that a bunch of adepts tried to shade up a ramp and they all died so quickly? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, sometimes when I see something like that where the DT just walks forward and gets obliterated, I think of that moment. Yeah, yeah. So funny. It happens so fast, your brain's not even ready to see them all disappear like that. Yeah. So it looks like a charge lot Archon type of situation is going <laughs> a brewing right now. <laughs> a brewing? It's a brewing, look. It's a brewing, friend. I love Most that the Observer is consistently being made just in case uh, Banshee start. You can fly his prism up there and finish yeah. it. Yeah. Just in case he needs to do that. It's just about a little bit under halfway done. Yeah. It's a good place to keep it. It's like when you start a, a turret because you don't know if you need it, and then you just leave it there forever. <laughs> For the entire game. Yeah. I don't know. Um, good move, Command. Well, if he gets those Archons up a little bit closer, he's going to do these Warpins as well. The uh, Bunker goes down. Now, the Zealot count is thinning, but hold on. There's a few more Zealots that are going to come yeah. in here in the front. Good and if he can get warpin. some of that splash from those Archons over there, unfortunately, yeah. one of them was being pulled down to the bottom right. The Vikings actually coming up and hitting this War Prism. He's killed 18 SCVs already. Artosis, I think he just took out the Natural. Well, oh. it does look that way, doesn't yeah. it? Now, there's nothing this is left actually just working. Lifted. I can't believe that actually worked. You shouldn't be able to bust the ramp right this now. This is not. This is not with a Terran making a third command center. By the way, this is just like. Ooh, look at this lock on. This was a really cute play right there, boosting out the cyclone so it could lock on and kill this prism. Definitely worth dying for if it does. That gets the boost and gets out of there as well. So he loses this natural, but Stim just finished up. Oh. So the, he can actually come down here and clear this and maybe get something else done as well. Okay, one Archon down. These Zealots just remaining back here. Nice recall on some of those Zealots. Yeah, that was that was a very good play right there. Especially if you do damage like that, you don't want to throw those units away. And unfortunately, he still gets one Archon out. Does Kier just go across the map right now? I don't know, because if Parting had three bases, I'd say yes, absolutely. But since he's sitting there on two, I don't know that you're really going to get anything done. He's going to come out again. This is such a weird game. It's everything about this has kind of gone in an unexpected way. The natural's been reclaimed here by Cure. But is it not possible for Protoss to try to come in there again? You certainly slowed him down at that point in time. A lot of those key defensive units are gone. Um, it doesn't appear that Parting's going to take a third right away. We don't, we don't see that being built anywhere here. Yeah, it seems like Parting is likely just can you continue to make units and look for another way to do some damage. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm sorry. He is going to get a third, apparently. 
Okay. Maybe he won't actually attack in here. But he doesn't have any forges yet, which is like a really important thing to look at. Right. Uh, this it, the more that it someone plays like this, where it's like, yeah, you're you're getting the third nexus technically. It's kind of like we saw Hero play some some games like this last night where you're kind of utilizing a tempo advantage. You have this excess of workers. You're going to continue to make a bunch of units and try to roll through your opponent. But if you can figure this out, figure that this is, oh my god, I can't even speak. You can do this, Figure Tosis. out that this is happening as the Terran player, you can adjust accordingly. Like, if he just fields a ton of units and then you sit back and let your upgrades finish and then move out, that's going to be good for you. Scan here. Terran's gonna try finally try to Is that mostly get marauders? some kind of initiation. I think so. I don't Lots think it's widow mines. He had a lot of widow mines burrowed okay. right at his natural. Is this gonna get spotted? No, it's not. Yes. Oops. Yes. We yes. Embrace the Back glory home. Of Fly all over the place. Yeah, do a figure eight over the zealot. Yeah, make and a go Mickey home. Mouse head and shape over his zealot yeah. there. Yeah. Then. Where is he going to go? That is he going to try to drop the third? I think a drop of the main might have been better. Uh, again, uh, party is just making sure that Terran is stuck on two bases for now. Again, Terran needs to do a lot of damage or get an expansion up because Protoss is beginning to outgrow. Uh, the Ghost Academy coming up right now. Parting has Psy Storm though, so this army, I'm a little bit nervous for him. He doesn't really have anything to oh fight man, against this the Psy angle. Storm. Here we go! Oh, I love the flank. Oh my god, beautiful storms here. Okay, that's all you need to do if you have uh, Templars like that. Storms and Warp Prisms are pretty good. And he now, has no I storms mean, left, but the army Protoss should be big be enough, I think. itching for a fight, right? Ooh. I mean, he's trying to micro here and utilize, uh, oh my god, two more storms? Does storm cost mana or no? Is that just like attacking? No, it's just, yeah, it's got a cool, that's like blank. Oh, okay. Seems that way. Okay, the prism goes down, so I guess that's nice. But he doesn't have enough units to fight this. Not by any means. Yeah, well, this is just going to get chased all the way back home. And this little piggy went wee, wee, wee all the way home, Artosis. This is... This is brutal. He's gonna. He's literally kiting all the way across the oh. map. Now, there's been a little bit... Uh, a few more units that have come up here. He's trying to use to, to fight this. But I oh. think Protoss just has too much muscle. He, he has quite a bit of muscle, but let's take a look at the actual stats of this game right now. It's 1-1 one, one upgrades against 0-0. Zero, zero. There's no forges on the way, right? So Parting is playing a very aggressive game for a reason. He's he's not going to... Like, he's not going up the tech tree anymore. He's not getting any upgrades. There are ghosts coming out. So if you have two more upgrades in your opponent and you can... Oh. Minimize the size storm. You could end up winning this. Well, here's the problem. Uh, now Terran's gonna have to try to attack back into this. I'm sorry. Where are the Templars? Oh, there's one on the low ground. Oh, there's two actually. He comes in from really cool angles. Yeah. Well, this is the thing about parting is even though um, you know, he's not currently one of the players we think of as the best with Protoss, he definitely see why he was once the world champion. Well, he's he, very yeah. smart, and I think you know if he keeps this up, I don't see why he doesn't get out of this group. I think Parting takes his inspiration from anywhere. He was probably just laying in his apartment on his couch. And he noticed the light refracting from different angles off his glasses. So he's like, I can bring in High Templars from weird sides and size storm the Terran army. And that he does. So this might be the big moment here for Parting to try to attack the third base. Uh, I think Parting's not going to attack into that. Uh, I, I think this doesn't work. Okay, EMP there. Stalker's attacking up here, but he's okay. good EMP. very good, very, very good. Completely eliminating the energy on those Templars. Two more Templars coming up, though. Parting has started 1-1, one, one. so that's going to give him kind of a, a longer-term plan here as well. It's good timing since Kier takes the space. Oh, some pretty good forces. Another side Storm from the side. He Another might have bit. enough here. Good micro uh, by Cure. Oh, this is just so oh much God. damage. Oh, my God. The command center oh, getting so low. Oh, he gets the repair up. Yeah, but three Archons coming in here as well. They can take so much damage. Oh. Again, good micro. Kind of a poor yeah. force field. Yeah, I, I had a good dodge there on that one force field. I, I think this is too much, though, even with just the Archons in the front. The yeah. Sockers blink up immediately. Right. We have more Zealots coming through here. This is going to go all the way back to the production facility, and I think that should be game. 
Looks like here's still trying to hold on, but yeah, that is it. Yeah, GG. Partying. Yeah, first game to party. Nicely done. I love the energy coming out of partying whenever he's here at the GSL. Yeah. You know? There's something about the way he moves in his chair and you know how he whether he wins or he loses, he just you know he has he's on a different frequency. He is on a different frequency. Different vibr vibrations coming there from partying. Yeah. yeah. It, it's it's kind of funny because players like this are kind of rare, like with this type of uh, way about them. You know, he's kind of like sarcastic and. Well, the thing is, if if you, have, I mean, we know because we've talked to, him, but he's really funny and really like uh, witty, kind yeah. of with it. Yeah. And, and, and it's it's cool. You can see it in his play. You know, his personality comes out in his play. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that game reminded me a lot of the way that we were watching Hero play some PBTs recently, where you yeah. skip those forges for a long time in favor of just getting a gigantic army out. An interesting game, though. It opened up with that proxy uh, robo and everything, and the DT drop. That was a crazy game. We're going to game number two on Kairos Junction. Right now, parting with a 1-0 lead versus Cure. <laughs> Gin Air Green Wings, Cure. <laughs> Player one, parting. So will we see another very aggressive, cheesy play out of parting here? This follow-up was strong, though. Again, I think that there's a lot of redeeming things about Cure's play. Sometimes you start getting quite good, but it takes a while to make that last step that turns your losses into wins. I would just be so thrilled to see Parting do well. Uh, you know, he had a good run there in the Super Tournament, and I don't want that to be a fluke. You know, I love seeing a lot of these old school players come back and and actually play really well. Um, that being said, Parting has such an odd style. I, want, I wonder how long this can last. Do you know what I'm saying? He's He does a lot of cheeses. He's got a lot of, uh, you know, he was doing cannon rushes a lot for a while. and You don't normally expect that to last through the ages. Yeah, you don't expect that for sure. You need to show a, a big variety, a big range of play. Uh, you know, the thing is he's showing some other skills as well. His micro overall is pretty good. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the same tier compared to everyone else that it used to be, because he was like basically the best micro player in the world when he was on top. But I think these things can come back to him. Uh, I felt like he macroed reasonably well that game and strategically had some very good ideas about what he was doing. And uh, definitely he was quite decisive and that's, that's probably the most important thing really. Nexus is going to be finishing up in a little bit here. You can see the Reaper pops up. Is not able to do uh, any real scouting here. And this is one of the things about this map. It's hard to actually get in there and figure anything out. We got concussive shells coming for Terran as well as Parting gets the Robo up here. Oh. So it's going to be Robo Tech. Okay. That's interesting. Let's see what Kira wants to do with this. Second barracks on the way as well. Walking out across the map, looking to just catch anything on its way. You know, uh, if any units come out, obviously he can get a kill on them. But since it was a century first, it's much less likely that you're going to see any units. So maybe, oh, actually gets that, excuse me, Marauder scouted. Yeah, he does see that out there. Yeah, and the shield battery goes down. So he's pretty aware of what the dangers are right now. So let's see if this can still do anything. The stim has just now started as well. But I think Parting, yeah, he's going to be basically fine here. At least he sees what's coming. Uh, certainly this is going to have to start before the Immortal gets out. And so we have that initial little army coming up here. I think, yeah, he just turns around, right? Yeah, with the shield batteries, it, it doesn't make as much sense. But you know what? You forced a couple shield batteries. Yeah, and that's some that's money that could have gone elsewhere. Yeah, not so bad. It's like Colossus Tech on the way here for Parting. is making Immortal as well, playing a very safe game. So... Uh, quite the opposite of what we've seen in the previous one. 
you were saying he needs to show more than just cheeses and cannon rushes and things like that. And here he is. Showing, you know, this is just safety play. Tasteless approves. You could just, like, uh, erase the name tags and look at this and say, oh, this is, like, deer or this is stats or trap right. or something like that. Kind of looks like that as far as the build order goes. See if he can play it to that level, though. Behind this, Cure definitely just playing a uh, pretty standard here. Getting that factory up. I, There's more barracks coming down. I and look at that. Warp Prism Speed. Cool. I swear to God that I was just thinking to myself, I just said all these things about parting, going into Colossus Tech, watch him get Warp Prism Speed. <laughs> yeah, and here it is. I was literally just thinking that to myself. And then here we are, Warp Prism Speed on the way, Disruptor on the way. So speed, Disruptor drops. Uh, this Which, is again a very unorthodox style. I think he'll actually do well with this. The difficulty of this is you have to have lots of mini-map awareness and awareness of where all of your units are at every time. And we saw some of that already from him uh, when he was utilizing the High Templars. They were coming in from all sorts of angles at perfect times. That can be a little bit difficult to do because if, if like they, you know, if you're a little bit unaware of where your opponent is and where your High Templar is, it gets sniped. The same can be said about this, because you're wanting to come in from certain angles. Of course, there's just the straight-on harassment, but as he comes oh. across the map, we'll see it as well. Not bad. Yeah, this is cool. Of course, a Viking should start immediately now after this medevac. The speed will allow him to get away. There's not, you know, the, the way that Kier has his army set up, it's kind of hard to actually get over there and do too mm -hmm. much more damage. You know, the Disruptor has to have a certain distance they can kind of close in on. And so this is pretty well handled here. Now they've got the Widow Mines coming in here and broing. Parting reacts immediately, and it looks like he's only going to lose about three probes there. Not too bad. What? Okay, that does get away. No War Prison pickup speed there. <laughs> Two disruptors now. I was worried if he just wants to try to hit the bunker over and over or something like that. I mean... Because look at this you, spread. There's no could. way to do real damage here as no. Protoss. Things will get picked off. It will not go well. But this is such a useful tool to have the speed prism with the uh, disruptors. I'm surprised you didn't make a Viking, by the way. Because a single Viking does a great job zoning this. Obviously, with the speed, it's not like a 100% answer. But it's a good answer still. Oh, look at that. You can just barely get in here and get the edge yeah. of the SCV patches there. Uh, another Widow Mine drop coming in here. Looks like... Oh my god, they both get the bro off. Oh, that's funny. That's cleaned up. Meanwhile, five SCVs have been killed. So we just missed the hit over there. Terran now going to come out here with a push. Again, it's Terran on two bases. There is a third CC being made, but for now it's a, a powering Terran about to try to hit an expanding, harassing Protoss. <gasps> that would be so good. Oh my god, this is making me crazy. Someone has to do something yeah, here. Yeah, someone has to see something. Looks like there's drops going on at the same time. Oh, please. Let's see it. <laughs> okay, that was hard to watch. Yeah, he's going to try to come out once more. The three more gateways are being uh, planted. And are we actually going to see Kier try to come in here and attack up from the bottom? There's also another pickup that's happened just out north of the second base for Terran. Well, he's and there's just, I guess, nothing here. I didn't fully realize. He's like, how are those batteries that I made you make now? Yeah, he's definitely a bit out of position, taking some damage, and going to get out immediately. Wow, that was actually very effective. Another that, couple of medevacs going towards that third base. Is there anything to defend the third? Seems like party is not quite spread out properly. Mm -hmm. And really, it's going to be up to Cure to just look for any kind of hole, any kind of exploit where he can come in and do some damage. Ooh, he just does not see this. This Nexus could be in a lot of trouble here. Going to go after probes to start. A couple Warpins come in. Seems like he should be able to save the Nexus at least. Some Liberators being made. Oh, oh my god. Ouch. That makes it so much more dangerous now. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. And it looks like Kieran wants to try to hit here from the, um, the south. So to unload his army. Yeah, it's one of these situations where maybe he can just run in and snipe a bunch of probes or a nexus. And there's that late third. Terran going for the offense here. There is one observer to spot this, so let's see if Parting's actually ready. 
So look at this. After the third base is landing, the fusion core. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my is god! Coming oh up. my god! Yeah, and uh, getting he'll be going for liberator range, and he's already been producing quite a few liberators. This is pretty darn good fundamental play. It's a little bit older style. Oh my god! Somehow that made it in. Yeah, now it's being chased by liberators. Yeah, it's gonna take a Look while. Look how fast that guy is. Oh, this marine's gonna get it. Hero marine. Okay, so anyways, uh, I I kind of like it. This is about as fast as you can go, liberator range without it being a, a huge gamble, like we saw Fantasy do the other day, right? If you do it on two base, that's like kind of crazy. But it feels like a situation where he can get it out, and this is something that. Uh, I was kind of talking about with Gumiho, where he was playing against these gateway heavy composition with Psystorm and all that, and he would just sit there and make more of his barracks units. But when you start mixing in Liberators with range, this is going to become a lot tougher for Party. He's going to have to get either go like very aggressive going around the map, running around Liberators and things like that, but that doesn't last for very long. Eventually, they're going to hit that critical mass of Liberators, and you're going to have a hard time. So probably going to have to go up into Tempest. Seems like it, Artosis. Drop over here, uh, hitting the third base. We're gonna have the recall come back, but immediately here picks up and tries to go. Oh my God! Okay, they both end up living. Um, so you won't be able to do a recall for a little bit now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Terran is is starting to look stronger and stronger and stronger here. He truly is. Quality upgrades and liberator range with three liberators at a time is nothing to scoff at. Looks like he just gets his armory, so he should be able to start his additional upgrades in plenty of time. Yeah, it's it's looking pretty good for Kier. I don't see the plan for parting at the moment. He's got 23 Blink Stalkers and 17 Charge Zealots with 7 High Templar. It's kind of a weird comp. Very Stalker heavy. Yeah, and then you oh, see all those. No way. There's no way he can attack into that. Oh, good Disruptor hit, though. Couple very good disruptor hits. You know, disruptor Blink Soccer can play a little bit against this, but Liberator Range really is a good counter in this situation. Yeah, look at that. What are you There's gonna do? There's no way he can get in there. No, I think he needs to try to stretch this game out big time. So many stalkers sitting at home. Very defensive positions. Harding starting to so go home too. And we see that Liberator coming up now to the top. I mean, basically, Terran is impenetrable right now. There's no yeah. point in trying uh, anything else here. And as a ranged Liberator gets into position, I guarantee you there's going to be some sort of spot that he can use. Oh, my God. Look at how many Liberators. Ten out on the map. I think here might have brought this game into a much better spot in, in, in a yeah. better fashion than what, what Parting did. I think what Parting did was interesting. And, and really cool and unique in a lot of ways, but it, it, I don't. I think Cure's kind of proven to be a, a more strong player in late game, and um, I think the Stargate tech was too late as well here for Party. It is. It, it, it is seems a bit like late against us. You know, he was massing Liberators for quite some time, so that is going to be difficult. He's making two Phoenixes. That's actually not a very oh, good counter. That wow. is insane! How much damage that was yeah. to those storms. That was crazy. But look, the. Uh, the Phoenixes are not going to be a good counter. Like, they will help him to clean up what's at his base right now, but they won't do much else than that. But he really needs to get into Liberators. But I feel like now that you see the Phoenixes, your push timing as Cure is lining up with this 2-2. You must move out with this 2-2, because your Liberators are not going to get better than they are right now. Your upgrades compared to your opponent are not going to get better either. This is oh like his God. ultimate moment. It's like right now, Parting is starting to win on a lot of different fronts, though. It's just as far as these engagements go, but... Does Cure simply just have too much at the end of the day, despite all those great storms here from Parting and the ridiculous Gosh. number of Liberators? I feel like there's more Liberators on the game right now than there are Stalkers on the map. Just about. There's a serious amount of Liberators right now. So hard to actually right. break in here. We're at the point in time where Cure could start to write messages with the Liberators on the map here. Uh, well, the uh, amount of storms that are out here, I feel like Parting should change his ID to oh Hurricane. My. Look at this. He's just brute forcing his way with Stalkers right now. But the Marauders come in, and they are going to have something to say about that. Well, hold on. There's not that many Liberators left now. Just needs to try to stay at a distance. There's not a lot on the ground. Parting's army is almost <laughs> entirely Stalkers. Yeah. This is so funny. Look at that. Two Marines to yeah. cover this. Yeah. Okay, so he's going to take down this fourth base. 
There is a fifth being made in the bottom left, though. Well, just the left, I guess. Okay, so that's been taken out. Nicely done. Uh, party's already expanding, though, at the bottom. Keep in mind Ooh. that the majority of the Liberators were picked off um, earlier on, so it's going to be a long time to rebuild all that. And I guess Cure just wants to try to push through here. Yeah, well, he's fighting against almost no splash damage here. A couple storms should come up now. He still does have that disruptor. Hard to break through all this, though. More and more bio coming up. He's up a couple upgrades in bio. I mean, parting is doing this as well as you really could in this situation. Yeah, actually, I, I got to say, Parting's killing it, frankly. I mean, it, it, I think Kyrie's still looking a little bit stronger overall, but he's actually holding this off. Um, Terran scans and sees that center left base, which I think just finished. Yeah, the probe is being transferred over there. And Parting's probably going to try to expand up again. Now, I don't know about Parting moving out here, yeah. but then again, I don't see any Terran army, so maybe this is actually just fine. I'm yeah. surprised he even blinked forward there. Yeah, a little bit that weird. That was like so ambitious. Uh, well, this situation is very, very tough for Parting, anyways. It's what are you, what are you supposed to do? He's been trading it such an inefficient way. Uh, his stargates were a little bit late. There's no question. So he's having to make mass blink stalkers, and that is about the easiest thing to counter in the late game as Terran. Yeah. Even the thing that they're countering, the Liberators, actually counters them. Yeah, when you get enough of them, yeah. it's hard to get at any angle that's going to be yeah, better with trying to fight under there. there. It's just crazy one-sided. Here expanding again. Here's basically got all of the expansions in his little corner of the map taken. And I just don't know that Party could do anything to take this down. We finally have more Tempest coming out here. Again, more and more and more Stalkers being made because you have to try to address the Liberators until you have that kind of air army that could deal with this. They're taking a lot of bases and Party trying to slow them down in that regard. Not really working out so well. well that's a good catch, though. It's a real good catch. Well, Party needs what he can get at, at this point in time. More scans coming down. Funny game, considering how this all started. And by the way, I do want to point out, Parting is still playing really, really well. I, I really do feel like Parting is, is going to be back and, and much more regular here in GSL. Yeah, he's he's definitely getting better. Like if you look at his first season, then his Super Tournament, then this, there's definitely improvements occurring. Uh, but I still think he's on the lower end of GSL players overall, like around a 32 guy. There's not like there's someone in the round of 16 that I think that he could replace, you know what I mean? Sure. Maybe make it better as far as his crazy fun personality, but as far as skill, I'm not so sure about that. Okay, nice shots here. And is this going to be enough? He's kind of gotten right under where most of those Liberators are. Oh, wow, I didn't realize there was that many Marines under there. It was kind of perfectly covered by everything that was flying there. Yeah, he's, he's taking as good of fights as he can, but he's down half army supply right now. Yeah, Cure is basically outgrown Parting for about half of this game now. I mean, the later half here. So it's kind of impressive that Parting's been staying in this. He's been doing damage. But yeah, every time the battle finishes and you look at the supplies, Parting is definitely, definitely with the smaller army. Yeah. More Tempests are coming out. It's mostly Tempest Stalker at this point. He's got to keep some, uh, some High Templars in there as well, though. Here, moving forward to this fourth base. Gonna take it down pretty easily. Nice storms there. Uh, are we seeing the beginning of the end? I actually was starting to think we are. Yeah, there it is. Here takes it. Nicely done. Long, dramatic game. Uh, you can see Party definitely with a good opener. Also, Party definitely frustrated with that loss, but can he do it and pull it together here in game three? Now, Party is known for being very, very Cheesy, he's got a lot of great rushes. Pure actually was not having an easy time against him either. It was just that once we got to the very, very late game and the Liberators started to stack, you could see Party wasn't quite shifting gears fast enough. Yeah, it, that, that definitely was the case, uh, to have that many Liberators pop out. It's not that popular to go three base range Liberator, but I think that Cure made a good adjustment from the first game. Yeah. And it seems to be more than a few uh, aggressive Protosses are playing a little bit like this. 
Uh, you know, just going into Storm, getting a lot of gateway units out and whatnot. And all that stuff is countered by Liberator. So a very good call there by Cure. We're going to go uh, now to Cyber Forest as we start game number three. Dark is waiting in the winner's match to take on either Cure or Party, depending on who wins this game. And uh, our game is now up, so let's go into it. Jin Air Green Wings, Cure. Player one, parting. Does that make Cure player two? Well, that is yet to be seen, Tasteless. Player one always wins, right? Well, if it's player one, that means that uh, it's his house, which means his friend is playing on the Mad Cats controller. <laughs> That's funny, yeah. It, yeah. Back in our day, Mad Cats controls were terrible. And then yeah, they, they got good. really good now. Then they became good and went out of business. How weird is that? <laughs> Yeah, I remember that. What was it like right when the Street Fighter 4 was coming out? Mad Cats had these really good some joysticks. Six yeah. And, yeah. The controls were legit. And there you see it. Oh my god. Minchik here as well. The old manager of MC. Really cool to have MC here tonight. Yeah. Got a lot of special guests here. Repping the uh, old school right now. So what is Parting going to do? He's still refused to play a standard game so far. Uh, you know, I think that right now, standard is off meta. It's like a weird way to play at the moment. Uh, so that means that standard is changing, and I think that no one knows exactly what standard is. I would say the closest thing to standard right now would be Blink Robo. Three gate stalkers with an observer. Yeah, we've definitely seen that trend here, I especially think, in the yeah. season and in Super Tournament. But I think right now a lot of StarCraft II is uh, in this current meta about concealing what you're doing and making strong, aggressive plays. That seems to be the case. It's a, it's a very interesting shift that we've seen from the more predictable plays that have been very strong in the past. Uh, not a whole lot of players really want to go into late game. I, I kind of welcome the vast change in meta. It's fun. It's fun to see when you know rushes are really working. To you know, we've had periods where players are getting like so deep in the late game, but we've never been in in, <laughs> in games that get this complicated. But yeah, definitely a lot more timing attacks seem to be trending right now. Yeah. So the robo's just now finished. Pretty conservative play from Parting thus yeah, far. Yeah, Parting is looking like what uh, we tend to see. It's kind of the ordinary o opening style here. Now, that being said, you know, even with a Robo, he did end up going into Disruptors. After Artosis, I thought correctly so, said it was probably going to be Colossus or something like that. It was totally not the case. But here, just making some Observers and Stalkers. I mean, this could be an early Heart of the Swarm build. Uh, blindly making the Shield Battery because he just doesn't have a whole lot of Intel. Yeah, kind of a... Defensive play, though, and I'm, I'm wondering where he's going to go with it. Yeah, look at that. Plus two gates. Like, this is a very, very, very safe build. This is like a great ladder build is what we're seeing Parting doing. Well, let's see how he does against Cure. Cure's a very strong player. Yeah. And I think Cure, one of those guys that's just never phased by what he's up against. But definitely a Terran that's overshadowed compared to some of these other Terrans we have here. We've had so many iconic Terrans in yeah. GSL, old and new. Uh, I feel like occasionally Cure is in the background compared to some of those other players that we have. He's been a high C rank, all the way up to high B rank Terran, quite a few times, right? Like, right. As in, he's just he's not that top tier. He's not a horseman. He's not Gumiho. Even alive entered that tier for a little bit. But he's more like Bunny tier, basically. Maybe a, a, Maybe little, a little bit, bit better. better than that. A little bit better than Bunny. Yeah. 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 So. 
He's like a second tier player, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Are we going to call this his Colossus or is it going to be Disruptors again or Tosis? It's Colossus this time for sure. Okay. Medivac uh, comes through there. He didn't have anything in there. No. Yeah, yeah. He's tricking him. To see if he could force a probe pull. Not a bad idea. Can be a little bit risky. And now we have Kier coming out on the map. It's a good thing that Parting's out here right now. Yes. He was not, and this got in a position. It could be very scary. So you can, you can kite a little bit against Moraine. Stalkers are just slightly quicker. He just now starts a Colossus. I think because this push is already coming, if he had made a Disruptor, that wouldn't have been bad. Uh, the Disruptor, you can get out really quickly and just get a good shot off and it's over. Well, I guess he has enough. Never mind. Uh, wow. This just is just completely enough. crushing through here. And this is possibly going to cost Cure the game. I mean, yeah. I... Well, that's a build that I, stops any early rush if you just go Robo into I, three gate. I can't believe he... he uh, I feel like once the Stalkers are hitting that, you know that Parting especially is going to set up and deny your push. Well, that was a very failed push. Yeah. There's like various levels of fail, and that was on the very Look at this. He it. just marches in there. And he's going to lose the Immortal, but he also loses the Bunker. I think the uh, first Colossus is going to be out, by the way. There's not that much to defend here. SCVs have to be pulled. One tank comes up. He probably cannot try to go there and kill that. Still six SCV kills after smashing that push. Parting looking very good. Look at this. Pretty conservative still. Throws up one forge. Just getting some sentries out, making a very strong, stable unit composition. That's really interesting. He's used some very different strats here so far tonight. This was kind of the, the complete stock standard safe play. It's like what Deer was using at the beginning of last season that was really impressive, where he just stomped on all the different aggressions that uh, Terrans were still bringing at that point. You know, the meta shifted a little bit into some slightly more technical, greedier plays from Terrans, so we saw a shift towards Blink a little bit. But here he's just, he's using a lot of different strategies. You know, the proxy robo in game one with the very all-in play into DTs and everything. And then he played that Forgeless style, where he's just kind of massing up units in game two. And here, sit back, let your opponent come to you, kill his units, yeah. be ahead. I do feel like after that initial rush, it's kind of like it's Cure's oh. uh, game to, I mean, Parting's game to lose here. And again, another victory. Now, Parting knows exactly where he is. By the way, uh, looking at uh, Cure's facial expressions here, he's yeah, he doesn't look too very happy. unhappy. Um, with the way this game's going here. You know, it, it, it's tough when you, you have an initial, well, your strategy is to come out initially with some kind of an attack and do damage, and it's it's just shut down. But here you are in this game, and you better give it your all anyways, because uh, you're out, <laughs> or you're in the loser's match, and so you might as well try to hang on, but it, it's an uphill fight, and you know, at the highest level of play, it's usually pretty straightforward for one pro to just kind of stay on top if there's a major mistake early on. Yeah, it's like, how do you come back here? Yeah, you almost need Protoss to, to make a huge mistake. I just don't think it's going to happen. And in fact, I think that the economy's kicked in so hard right now for Parting that uh, there's a chance Parting might even actually just walk in here and kill him. It looks like he wants to attack. He can yeah. minimum deny the third base for a very, very long try time. Try to deny the third base is a lot safer, but we've seen this happening a lot lately, especially with Protosses. They seem to know exactly when to just go in there and kill you. Or, it, like, the math is just not on your side. They have a certain set of units, I, and... Yeah. It's, it's hard to have that correct killer instinct. Like, I look at this... Oh... With that depot wall and everything, I don't think you kill him with this. I, I think it's, like, a way that you might end up... Giving enough to him that he can take his third base. I mean, all you really need to do is watch for drops. So you surround him with over, um, observers. Or overlords. Or overlords. I almost said overlords. <laughs> and uh, you just try to shut that down and wait for that third base. And speaking of that, here comes the third base. Yeah. It's going to be taken now. So all Parting has to do is sit back. If Curious to drop, like do a huge drop with, let's say, four medevacs or five medevacs and, and try to hit the main, uh, you can then just walk right up there and start killing the natural and, and probably win the game. Okay, this is, he's gonna just go in. I think okay. he's gonna just kill everything. Okay, here very quickly sims back up his ramp. Makes a nice little choke right there. Blink forward with these stalkers, trying to pick off all of the sea chinks as quickly as possible. The Colossus is still at really high health. Oh, he's just dominating here. Um, 
Now, it's going to be a little bit tricky to actually get down on the low ground here for Terran and, and save that. So he's going to try to come here anyways. Again, three Colossi is just so much damage to infantry. It is. You're really shredding Marines at that point. He has plus one on him as well. Yeah, denies that third base really, really easily. Definitely a worthwhile move for parting. The spies are getting a lot closer, though. He's got to be careful here. You waste all your uh, splash units. That can be a problem. Yeah, you just don't want to overcommit here. That's one of the first lessons people learn when they're playing the game is, listen, if you've got the lead, don't don't throw this away. All Terran can do is try to land that third command center down over and over and over again. All right, moving out. Finally landing yep. that third base. Seems like he's not going to push in again right As now. As this game went on, guys, Cure has actually caught up in supply. I think Parting really did overextend a little bit too much. It doesn't mean he's going to lose, but, you know, you don't want to throw here. Third base has now been set up. Tanks are sieging on the low ground. I felt like Parting actually did make the right choice with that first move in. And he took a fourth base during all this. He's getting Psy Storm. He's getting plus two armor. I think he's still in a good spot, to be honest. Like, Cure does have a much scarier army right now. I think the very last attack we saw with the three Colossus going up the hill, that was a little bit much. I think three full health Colossus right here is a much better situation than two in the yellow. And he didn't really do that much with that push. Now he's getting a very large army. As soon as Psy Storm is ready, it's going to be hard to deal with this. But there are some Vikings out at least. Let's see if he can push back that prism some. The thing is, you can have High Templars on the ground as well if you have Colossus. You can kind of zone everything back with the Colossus. You know, yeah. it, it, that's because uh, part of the reason the High Templars are in the prism is, well, to move quickly enough to kind of have that surprise thing, but also they can't be EMP'd or anything. Right, right. Oh, okay, here we go. Party's going to go for it. Huh. And, uh, you know, the thing is, the Colossi didn't quite get the shots off they needed. Now, those are some great storms getting Ooh. both the workers and the infantry. But yeah, Protoss absolutely needs to back up and try to get onto the high ground here. Vikings uh, gunning down that war prison. They're gonna get it. Whoa! Yeah, that one was a bit of an overextension, no doubt. Oh my god, he got the war prism. What is happening? Parting had this, man. This is just brutal. Like, Terran actually he's... chases this away. Now Parting's on four bases to cure his three, so there's still another way that, that, that Parting's ahead, but I just feel like with this next attack, he's going to come up. Do you do an SCV pull here? Oh, Kier never question. started two two. Well, he's you know he yeah he's got three bases. I'm not sure if he's if he knows what he wants to do either. He's kind of going back uh, and forth. Well, he's gonna fly over his oh my god command center. But the more upgrades he gets down, the more scared I become for him. Oh man. Great size storms there, but stalkers alone are not enough against stim infantry with tanks. Hmm. He's taking his fifth. It's just, it, Cure, I don't think Cure's position is going to get too much better than it is right now. He's down two upgrades. He's up in army supply. I, yeah, Parting's going to try to play the long The upgrades are just scaring right the hell out of me here. Yeah, well, the upgrades are going to matter a lot as we go into the end game here. Like, you see this 3-3 on the way for Parting. When that finishes, you could probably kill that army with sentries being up four upgrades. Yeah. Right? Pretty sure about that. Let me check my math. Okay, no, the sentries can't, but like regular <laughs> gateway units can. <laughs> oh, nice counter here. Is this going to force Cure back? Keep in mind, there is a recall available right now for the Protoss. Oh my gosh. Ooh, a prism going down in the main base as well. Parting trying to do everything to make him turn around. There's Parting's army. It's mostly over counterattacking. Okay, here's a scan. Now there's Templars pocketed all over around this army. And I think Parting's decided that he can actually recall back a little bit later here. Here we go, here we go. First oh, Templar shot down. That's uh, a good Colossi, shot. Colossus is completely annihilated there. A lot of damage being done to Kira at home. He's got to hold at least the top of his natural. We'll see where he decides to try to really make a stand over here. Again, there's more bases to try to destroy here for Parting. Parting got to take more of the map here. Although it looks like the natural is going to be safe for now. What is Party going to do? Is he going to go back? I'm starting to get nervous yeah, for him. Yeah, he'll recall to his third, I think, is what will happen. I feel like there's a missed opportunity here where you have sea tanks kind of hitting the minerals of this base. I think you got to slow down Party's economy immediately. 
Vikings trying to hit this Colossus over here. A storm used on those Vikings, not ideal. 31 workers have been killed. It's 18 to 43, so there's still more probes right now for parting. And the Dark Shrine on the way, a very good tech building for right now. These types of base trade scenarios, uh, Dark Shrines become really super powered. Oh my god, he's not watching this. He's just, he's literally not watching this. He just got the tail end of that, blinks that away. Oh my god. Is Parting not playing clean enough to close this out? I'm getting worried, Artosis. Uh, Cure with a 106 supply army to Parting 62. Parting reclaiming that uh, at that third base location. The inf infrastructurally, though, Parting's lost everything here. We gotta remember that. I mean, a, a lot of these gateways are gonna have to be yeah. remade. In fact, the core is being remade right now. Yeah, it is a bit of a problem. He has a little bit of a bank, so can't afford a lot of it. His army is just so much smaller. He needs some good storms coming up. Oh, look at those two hidden High Templar. I think he actually did have vision with those. <laughs> okay, you're going to be able to kill off this third, perhaps. If, if Party Ooh. loses this game, it is going to be haunting for him. Oh, my God. And, my you know, God. every time you see anything get killed off here, it's it means way more than it would in any normal game because you just don't have that much stuff left. In fact, Party leaning back in his chair here. Yeah. Looking very, very frustrated as this game. He definitely had advantages finishes. at times. He definitely did. And I think here, this is some expert level play. He's just really stayed focused and, and, and yeah. stayed on top of what he needed to say on top of. There were a lot of scary moments. A lot of side storms still coming in. Party not giving up yet. His army is very small, but if you can soften everything with Psystorm really well, it's where you can win the unwinnable. Those two High Templar, I think you might not even know that they're there. That's yeah. it. Wow. Oh, man. Harding is not having a good day. You're definitely happy with the way that game went. I think Harding had a, that game several moments that I think he made the wrong decision. And you can see how frustrated he is. Yeah. Well, he was just continually going for the kill. And you can see that he's quite good at it. But if that's the only thing you're going to do, you know, if you can't back that up, after you get an advantage like he had, I think denying the third the first time was great. He went into a fourth base. But he could have increased his tech a little bit, you know. He could have gotten a, some prisms going around and whatnot. Uh, well, falls down and has to fight DRG next. At least we get to see that, right? That's right. Battle of the old school. We're going to go to a short break. We come back here versus Dark in tonight's GSL Code S. Of the plan. It took me 30 years to understand that I ain't the one who make it debated over for Ken. Whether or not to keep you, rather or not to lead you. Knowing that I can see you, how could I turn and delete you? Been in that clinic before, saw the pill and the needle. Walking out, she in tears, probably thinking I'm evil. I'm thinking we dodged the bullet, give ourselves some time to peel. We may love a week later and give ourselves no time to heal. I'm thinking it's time to chill. Hit the yard for a vacay, tell her don't take the pill. One thinking about no baby, was thinking about my hey, they be 20 something and rich. I know that she getting thick, acting funny. See, now I'm understand everything it takes to be a man. I'm asking you for forgiveness while holding them to your hand. Praying that we can make it and I never let you down. On your head is the crown, my firstborn. You bring me black joy. Everything it takes to be a man. I'm asking you for forgiveness while holding on to your hand. Praying that we can make it and I never let you down. On your head is the crown, my firstborn. You bring me black joy. The only time I'm happy is around you. A lot of you inside of me, inside of you. It's all truth, it's all new. Still trying to make the adjustment. Feel back from everything. Rapping right in the hustling. Probably feel like they double. We struggle to stay afloat before I ever let you sink. My bare hands and build a boat. Thinking about your future. Birthdays and graduations. How your grandpa gave me advice on all these situations. I'm hoping to build a kingdom. Hand you over the castle. Be the first one in the crowd while you flipping over your tassel. Cheering you from the sideline. Basketball or soccer. Instead of being a rapper, hope you strive to be an author. I'm hoping that I can offer encouragement and support. But beware Snoop Dogs while you trying to build you a fort. So you will catch that one later. We'll watch the movie together. I'll be here in any weather to make it better. Cause now I understand everything. 
everything it takes to be a man. I'm asking you for forgiveness while holding up to your hand. Praying that we can make it and I never let you down. On your head is the crown, my first boy. You bring me black joy. Everything it takes to be a man. I'm asking you for forgiveness while holding on to your hand. Praying that we can make it and I never let you down. On your head is the crown, my first boy. You bring me black joy. The hands with scars and endless hate. If anyone knows my past is here, so you bring me comfort for truth. Come and hold my heart again, give of life. Don't let the sun go down on me. Come and hold my heart again, give her a light. But don't let the sun go down on me. Health and scars alike. You're the fight in peace and the war in quiet. Earthly tensions are known by you. So you've brought me comfort before truth, yeah. How you've brought me comfort. Singing over me, over me. Redemption singing over me, over me. Redemption singing over me, over me. Oh, redemption singing over me, over me. Yeah. Redemption singing. Singing over me, over me. Redemption singing over me, over me. Redemption singing over me, over me. Redemption singing over me, over me. Redemption. 
of 32. Okay, we're back in the GSL, and it's time for Cure versus Dark. And then we've got the old school match coming up next. Yeah. Uh, so Cure versus Dark, that's that's a good match, I think. I'm excited to see what type of style Cure is going to bring up here. This is going to be interesting. I, I think this, I think Cure's got a shot, but Dark is definitely just a better, a more well-rounded player. Would you agree? I mean, he, should, he should win this. Yeah, two, like two, Dark, Dark is definitely better than Cure, I would say. But, yeah, Cure feels to me like someone that has the potential for a sudden breakthrough where we're like, oh, this guy's just top eight a bunch now. Where everything just clicks for him. He just starts tearing through everything. Yeah. I get that feeling from him. Well, Dark, he's got no time to waste Artosis. He is here to win. He is here to dominate. He has not won a GSL Code S yet. He is angry about that. He's really angry. But can he keep that anger and not let it turn into disappointment? We're going to see in this match. Nice. Let's go to game one right now.
Gin Air Green Wings. Cure. Gosu Crew, Dark. I've seen a lot of trickery happening in TVZ lately. Faking out if you're going mech or not. I've seen some. Yep. This is, uh, I think, some of the coolest stuff we've had in this matchup in a long time where. Um, there's all sorts, all sorts of different strategies and techniques. We've got some dark support in the audience here. Um, no, that oh. that was a sign for cure. <laughs> Lights out, dark. Oh, uh, I just saw dark. I was kind of. Okay. I'm not good at. I never learned how to read, guys. Sorry. Um, well, light has like the silent G H, right? So that's like that stuff. I get it. It's not. It's not easy. It's no. like where's the G sound in that? That doesn't make any sense. Ligit? I don't know. Ligit? What Ligit is. <laughs> what country now, are you from? Now, but uh, to what I was saying, the this tech switch. Is, is really interesting because there's so many ways to disguise that you're going to go mech and how quickly do you do it and then what kind of yeah. mech is it going to be? Makes it a little bit exciting, but I feel like uh, right now, the number one problem that we're seeing with Zergs in this GSL season and why we only have two Zergs that have advanced so far, which is really, really low, uh, is they're having a hard time figuring out what's coming, both from Protoss and from Terran. We've seen a lot of situations where they don't know it's mech until it's kind of late. We've seen a lot of situations where you just can't figure out which Protoss push it is. That one, I think, is harder to solve than figuring out uh, whether or not it's mech, though. Well, I think Zerks can figure out, yeah, the, the mech. It's just that this is still something pretty new. There's a lot of these transitions. By the way, good job here with the Reaper coming down, uh -huh. forcing that drone to become an extractor for the time being. Very annoying to have to deal with that. Third command center coming up very, very quickly. So Cure's going to be going for a very long macro game this time around. Definitely looks that way. Let's see what else he adds here. Getting a second gas at the moment. Certainly reactor battalions are going to have to be part of this equation. That was innovation safety build for a really long time. Three command center pretty quickly uh, with reactor battalions, but occasionally mixing in the Banshees. It's like kind of a good tournament set if you feel like you're uh, very strong mechanically. And the Queen does finally chase the Reaper out. And that would have been just really funny if you had let that finish. <laughs> yeah. Wah, wah, wah. It's like, uh-oh. Uh -oh. Start some long distance mining. <laughs> <laughs> I got to make it look like this was intentional. So let's see if Dark does anything crazy and, and tries to attack in. Uh, it's hard to get any kind of raid until we really see any tech at all, because for now it's just going to be lings and up. I'm sorry, drones and upgrades. Yeah, uh, I'm just. I, I want to see what type of build uh, that Cure is going to actually go for here. So we've seen a lot of mech on this map. That's for sure. It's not stop aliens. Oh my god, fusion core. Okay. He's, I mean. I think it's for BC. I, I, that's but what I, I immediately assumed it was when I saw that go down. Okay, so he actually scouted the third command. Yeah. Okay, this is really interesting. Now, this is really skipping on everything, by the way, guys. Third CC and uh, switching to BCs. Well, when you see the third CC, that's kind of the funny part of it, is you would never expect the BC, I would think. Oh, Because BC for is sure. normally a really quick rush, whereas right now you're looking at it and... Probably the number one thing on your mind is, is he going mech or is he going now, bio? This is such an inefficient way to do this, but that... Watch him just because get range. Just Zerg, because Zerg is just not going to be ready at all. Um, this might see. throw Dark off. It definitely can. It definitely. And uh, Dark, I mean... Oh, Anitis. Oh, my God, I was choked in my water. <clears throat> yeah, Anitis, actually. That could just ruin this entire strategy here for the Terran. Yeah, I wonder... Okay, he's flying in. I, the thing is, he's playing so defensively right now. His units are at home, so if there was ever going to be a chance, right? Okay, he actually scouts what it is. I think Dark's just licking his lips right now, saying, I'm going to win game one. Well, you're looking at him. Is he licking his lips? No. Oh, okay. I could lie. Only the studio would know that I'm lying, but... That's okay. No one believes them. 
Um, okay, here comes that first night. Meanwhile, a bunch of Lings attacking over here into the front, getting some good angles here on these Hellions. Yeah, really nice move. It stops the Hellions from joining those SCVs to knock down the Nidus. Ooh, Queen's coming out. Transfuse is oh, going down. And look at that. Well executed by Dark. Oh, man, Dark is so good. Yeah, suddenly a lot of SCVs going down. He does keep the Siege Shank alive, which is incredibly important. Now we've got a lot more Lings coming out here. Second Nidus, I didn't even realize he had made that one up there in the yeah. main, coming in here now as well. And you know, the Battle Cruiser is just terrible against his unit composition. Well, it, once it gets Yamato, right, he can pick off the Queen with the highest energy with that, so that's kind of useful. He does have some Siege Tanks. The, the BC can actually fight Queens reasonably well, especially if you're repairing it. It's just the Lings can kill so many SCVs, you have to be careful about that. Spire is on the way, so... Oh, does he just want to try to end this? He's just going to poke in and out and eventually... Yeah, I think you definitely keep the pressure on because you're killing so many workers during this time. Okay, so many SCVs here that can repair this uh, battle cruiser, but right now not many doing so. Okay, he immediately fixes that up. 31 SCVs have been killed here, putting Terran at 25 to the 43. Uh, 43 drones here for Dark. And again, you're not even able to mine efficiently. For a lot of this, Terran wasn't mining at all. In fact, most SCVs are just used to help repair or body block. Yeah. And the moment that mining starts again, you can see Zerg immediately comes in. This is so perfectly done. And I love the Spire tech behind it. Zerk's banking yeah. gas, too. Yeah, Yamato comes out, but this is too little too late. Yeah. Surprised he's not going to go for the tank while this is going on, too. But I guess these Lings are eventually going to get over here. The CV kill count getting pretty out of control right now. Everything getting so deep into the red. He does have that seed chink. I didn't even realize that one was down there. Yeah, I had no idea either. But uh, look at this. He's got 15 workers to 43. Spire units should be able to just finish this. Oh, and I, I, if Cure doesn't leave the game already. Yeah. Seems like that's it. I Aggressive think so. play from Dark, able to kill off this 3CC BC rusher. 3CC BC. I don't think C -C 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 -C. we're going to see the strategy anymore here in this GSL. Good night, Command Center. Uh, there it is. Dark takes game one. And Cure looking very salty. You know, that's a strategy you want to try to slip out. Um, and and, and you know, the, the other player is not going to factor that in at all. And then you could just totally throw him off. But Dark with the Nidus play and the scout, excellently done. Dark will take game one, but it's not over yet. No, uh, I like that Cure was using like a, a build that we haven't really seen yet. Normally the BC rushes are much, much quicker. Kind of gave himself some more units, some more economy to do with it. Yeah. But Dark had chosen that game to be aggressive. It could have been a reactionary aggressive play as well because he did scout the third CC with the, uh, before he started the Nidus. All right, Port Alexander, port. our next map. If it is an old Alexander's port again. I wonder what Kier has up his sleeve here. Not sure. Dark has no time to waste, though. He wants to get out of this group. Cure's going to have to pull it together. Probably more standard play this time around. Let's find out if that's the case. Jin Air Green Wings. Cure. Gosu Crew, Dark. I'm going What are you giggling about, Artosis? The, the shot of Dark. Uh, there's like a spool of cable that's behind him that has a carpet partially covering it. I'm like, ah. That's why we <laughs> keep it classy over here. Yeah. We should make it a little bit trashier back there. Like, and here's our extra weights we have for weightlifting laying around. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've we've got it. We've got an exercise bike with old laundry hanging in a, off of it. There's a guy in it. <laughs> oh, for sure, most expensive thing to hang yeah, laundry off. Yeah. Of. <laughs> guy in a tank top just sitting yeah, on yeah. the bench watching yeah. Dark play over his shoulder. That's right. <laughs> 
What are other things in a house where it's like, well, this is just really, you know. Well, hold on. We're really me, seeing how you actually let live Let me think here. of my childhood home for a moment yeah. here and get back to you on that. <laughs> There's a stain in the rug. A stain, that's right. There has to be a, a stain. A rug with a stain on it, yeah. probably a shag rug, an old rug that yeah. nobody kind of uses anymore. There's a couple of old CDs that aren't in their cases on the ground face up. <laughs> <laughs> that's bad. Yeah, yeah. That's bad. <laughs> you know, my thing was dirty dishes in my room. Oh, no, that's, that, that, that is me to this day. And then, like, if anyone would come to my room, I would just throw, like, dirty clothes <laughs> over the dishes <laughs> so that no one would tell me to bring the dishes down. <laughs> but then you forget about the dishes for a really long time, Tasteless. Then it gets yeah, really yeah, yeah. gross. There's, like, an old bowl of cereal somewhere <laughs> in the corner. Yeah. And your mom or girlfriend finds it, and you're in a lot of trouble. You're like, why don't you just put it in the sink when you're done? You're like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I had don't to you up, do that? I had to queue up another game, and I thought it'd just be better on the floor by my feet where I don't look for it ever again. <laughs> you ever had it where, because uh, this is something I've been forcing myself to stop, but where you just have so much crap around your computer that eventually a ring starts to form on the side, oh, yeah. on the ground. Yeah. Until eventually you just walk home, you come home one day and you just see your computer chair and there's just a ring of stuff around it. You know the people are watching the stream right now and looking around at the ground and being like, oh my god, I'm that guy. Yeah. You know? Don't worry, there's you, a lot of those guys. You put in the lots chat. of so much junk on your on your desk, then you have that other chair that your friend normally sits on to talk to when you're playing games, but it's also just covered in junk and old dishes. That is a pet peeve of mine. Yeah. When like things get collected on a piece of furniture. Like whether it be like a comfortable chair or a couch or something. Yeah. I I I lose my mind when that happens. Woo! <laughs> Got it. But yeah, it like I, I I know that so well. Just have a couch that's like for laundry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is <laughs> <laughs> Laundry couch. You've got a love seat that's just filled up with old games that you haven't played in a long time, that yeah. you haven't put away. So we don't have any Nidus Network this time around. We're still waiting uh, to see what exactly the tech's going to be here from Dark. You don't normally in a best of three see Nidus used twice, but Dark is pretty good and pretty specific with his cheeses. That was few of those, yeah. pretty fortunate there that Dark went for that strategy. Uh, against Kier. Now, he, stout, he scouted what Kier was doing, but not before he had already decided to do the Nidus play anyways. And by the time you scout that, I mean, you're just... No, like, he, he actually did... He didn't scout the BC before, I think. No, he right? scouted the third CC. Yeah, he scouted He's the, the third, third CC, CC which, which it, you yeah. know, yeah. And he scouted the BC afterwards. Yeah, he's probably was right laughing so hard, milk's coming out of his nose when he sees it's BC play. He's like, oh, my God. Yeah. Hopefully he saw milk from that old cereal bowl in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the Nidus once again here. Just lings and uh No, he's doing made. a Nidus again? Yeah, he is. Well, he's just making me look bad. Normally, I'm right about that. You don't normally just go Nidus every game. Wow, the oh. disrespect, the shade thrown. We're yeah. talking rap battles level of disrespect, Ooh. Artosis. Third command center being started, though. He's making fun of where he's from and his opponent's girlfriend. Okay, he's oh. making fun of everything. Is that what they do in rap battles? Yeah, man. That's just mean. Oh, Why would man. they do that? Oh, you know, I love going to, uh, you know, cringe videos, just stuff that's hard to watch. And really bad rap battles are amazing. They're amazingly painful to watch. Oh, like, yeah? I'm sweating. I'm like, oh, oh, oh my god, this is so bad. <laughs> These guys are so like awkward. That. They can't diss each other. You and I should have a rap battle, Tasteless. Yeah, well, we don't. We probably can't even come up with stuff that rhymes back to back and make it work, but it'd just be us just hurling insults at each other, and eventually we're both crying. <laughs> we're both crying and hyperventilating. Yeah. Uh, come oh, in, what? Lings. That's another way to make it even worse for you? That's pretty funny. Next thing Cure does is light his hair on fire? What was that all about? Yeah, that command center's going yeah. down. It gets canceled. 13 already dying. Oh, my God. And that means that command center is probably not ever going to land again. Well, look at Kier. Kier's like, are you, is this seriously happening to me? Kier can't even feel good about his games against Parting after this. He's just like, I don't know. This is just a whole wave of different emotions coming through here. Yeah. Dark just smashing him with these plays. Dark getting ready. I feel like Kier's going to have to 
I think go Dark to, has to back up into a longer game. Gear's going to go to the green room here. And after this game and find that Dark's Nidus Worms are there too attacking him. <laughs> this is a bad feeling as a Terran, guys. This mm. is... It's a bad feeling as any player who's in the same type of thing twice. Yeah. Well, look, especially especially when you're defense. never supposed to do this two times in a row because it... Oh. So, the game is not actually over, okay? Uh, Kira's actually set up a really good defense. He has two command centers. Oh, oh that's, that's over, that's man. Painful. But Dark was on less than 30 drones from Rosa. Oh, my Artosis, God. This, this, this is over, buddy. Everything came out of those bunkers. The bunkers were such a big part of this defense. And I lost all the siege shanks and liberators. Oh. More links coming here. Terran does not have that many more SCVs left. Liberator goes down. This tank is not even sieged up. Well, but the queens are actually going to lose this. If bullets cost money, maybe that would have been a good move. Because every time he gets a wave of wings, he tries to dive in again. Correct. You know, if I was a Zerg, I would have evolved the Nidus to not have teeth. That looks dangerous. It looks like you're going to cut yourself when you come out of there. Well, that's so Marines don't go in. Little does Terran know they can just go invade the surface. <laughs> <laughs> but you see those teeth, yeah. you don't want to. You move through that Nidus Worm at the speed of sound, so it's pretty quick. Okay, it looks like you were right, Artosis. Well, it's way worse than when I started that sentence. Yeah. Because he actually had a fantastic defense, but for some reason he was, like, trying to push down the ramp before clearing his main. Which, when he had all the defense in the main, I feel like that's opposite. If you just, if you clear your main, then you can push down the ramp. And he was in a much healthier spot at that point. Now he needs to clear his main and take his natural really quickly. He hasn't, he lost so much. But he actually like was up in workers during all of that. He actually had a lot of powerful tech units. It was the type of situation where I felt like if he goes for a Raven and maybe retakes his natural, goes for a nice strong push, there might be some sort of chance. Feeling like that is less likely now. I think Dark really intelligently backed off as well. I mean, he, he's not overextending. He's gonna go back up and you know, finally, Cure's going to get some room to breathe here. He'll clean up the rest of these creep tumors and then try, I guess, to get a second base up. And then try to maybe do a push. But Artosis, alas, alas. Dark Spire is almost done. Did you say Dark Spire? Is that where you make <laughs> invisible flying mutas? <laughs> uh, he, he could, but he wouldn't need to in this game. So this modest amount of Marines, a medevac, and three tanks, it's going to come. Yeah, it seems it like there's enough queens and links here. Yeah. He's like, but what about my old friend, the Stim of Grade? Okay, another knight is going down as well. You're surrounded. Come out with your hands up. Yeah, that's a lot of queens, turns out. 13 queens. Lucky number. <laughs> okay, so the, <laughs> the links are going to now go into main here. This is before the hatchery is even taking damage. So basically, you can just stay back for now and try to hold this off. Now, let's see if the queens can do it. That's three sea chanks and a bunch of marines with stim. Queens are good, but they don't have that much damage. Yeah, this medevac's like, I'll try to heal everything I can. Not anymore. All right, the mute is coming in as well. Looks like eventually everything's going to be cleared. It's just one letter you've got to say twice. GG. Oh. Dark advances in first place in this group. I don't think All that's right. a big surprise. Dark's like, I'm done sitting at the kids' table of this GSL. I'll see you <laughs> kids later. See at least one of them later in that round of 16. Too bad. Kira just got Nidus twice. That's embarrassing, man. Not having the best day so far, but definitely I think he's still uh, a favorite to get out of this group. I think whoever wins between DRG and parting, which I'm kind of feeling is going to be parting. Could be a close match against Kira, but no, I, I think he is the second best player in this group here. We're going to go to an interview now with Dark. Uh, it'll be translated by the legend himself, the great G Clef. G Clef, tell us what's happening. The most famous player in the 16th round, the legendary team. Finally, with that 4 0 Dark, you are going to advance into the round of 16. The light of hope for Zerg.
Congratulations, start. Four wins, four wins today. How does it feel? I think this was the most worrisome round of 32 for me, actually. And making it out with this kind of result makes me feel ease a little. The first one, the ZVZ, was actually a really tough matchup for me. And whoever comes up in the winners, I thought I was going to have a hard time. But uh, on the day today, I think I thought my opponents were a little fuzzy. I don't think they were at the right moment. Right, right, right shape of form. And then before the match, you were telling me that you were going to have a match for two hours, and then you just go Nidus both times with Lynx. That's something that's actually not what I have prepared 100%. And then I, at the moment, I just thought, okay, maybe if I go Nidus, maybe I can just make it through. And then I thought the opponent, I thought Kyo was actually not thinking about Nidus at all, and it worked. Personally, was ZVP, and you were having a lot of, yeah, a lot of trouble going through that ZVT, and you missed that finals because of those matchups. And if you had any ZVP today, how would you have, how would you have felt? I was actually praying so that I could face Cure. I was praying really hard. And someone answered. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to whine about it, but it just, let's just think about it. Let's just talk about it. And <laughs> Toss, they are pretty, you know, pretty strong. And even the, uh, not just me, not just me on stage, other reserves has to speak up. They gotta come on stage and speak about this. Yeah, I think that means that ZVP matchup is pretty tough reserve. What if you were able to actually change the balance of StarCraft 2? What would you do first? If I had... Oh god, pro gamers getting to play god, I can't wait. Uh, War Prism, I think that's, <laughs> that's one. <laughs> and <laughs> Immortal, that's two. <laughs> Some nerves. Uh, just those two, I think that's enough if they get nerves. Yeah, we have a lot of Protoss players already. We had seven players making it into the round of 16. And not too many Zerbs. Uh, and by the time maybe we start round of 16 and in the later, later part of the tournament, maybe there will be some changes. I'm hoping. I'm pretty sure lots of Zerb players are pretty happy for you making out of the groups. Let's hear what you have to say at the final words. I, I actually prepared a lot of different things. And I'm yet to show what I have prepared for all the matches, so I'm going to show that in round of 16. Congratulations, Dark, once again. And let's go back to Taste of Sis. Thank you, G-Club. Excellent work. Um, kind of cool little series there. Uh, funny to see that Nidus Worm actually worked twice. And up next, we're going to have a match from the past. Yeah. DRG against Party in 2019 GSL Code S. One of them going to be falling out. Unfortunately. And then it'll be Cure in the final match against, yeah, either DRG or Party. Yeah. I'm rooting for DRG or Party in the final match. Well, which match. one? Because they're about to play each other, so you've got to choose one. I want to see Party move on. Well, according to Dark, the Immortals and War Prisms may help him with that. I think you might be right. We're going to go to a short break when we come back the next best of three in tonight's GSL Code S. Blah, blah, blah. Too much, cause it takes time to not talk too much because it's mine, and I do it with small steps, and I have no regrets. No mistakes, shine my black shoes, cause I wanna move. What do you choose? 
There are too many options, do not take me down With the fears you've raised Because they are not mine Running so fast like a shooting star Till I hit a home run Aim so wild I cannot be Like a Trojan horse, ready for the fight, and I do it with small steps, and I have no regrets, no mistakes, wear my best suit, cause I cannot lose, bumping up my mood, there are too many options and they can take me down, everything is now in place, because I hold the age. Mountain Dew GSL Season 2. 
Codex Renaissance. Welcome back, everybody. It's time for a blast from the, ba the past. I can't talk. You know how they're remaking every old movie, Artosis? Because they want to make do. money. Why don't we remake an old match? Because we want to make money, I guess. I don't know. Are we going to make money somehow off doing no, this? we're doing I this for happiness. We're doing this for joy. We're doing it for nostalgia. If you play StarCraft to make money, then you are maybe the dumbest person on Earth. When these guys were good, I like StarCraft better than... Mm. People were better back then. No, Everything that's older not. was better. Super Nintendo is my favorite console. That's fair, though. That's a good console. That was a good console. Yeah. But the graphics are... <laughs> right? Because that's, that's what they always some say. Some people say that, yeah. They go, the graphics are... It's like, what? Oh, look at oh, that. We got Cobalt. What? Are we going to make it? A map? Is that a map we have? I haven't seen that map before. Let's go to Port Alexander for game one. TRG party. Africa S2, Donregu. Does he still live in uh, Pusan, by the way? Oh, I don't know where he lives right now. Since oh. he just got out of the military, I would imagine he lives with his family, but I don't know. Player one, parting. Do you remember when it was uh, DRG's fault that Seed won a GSL? Wait, what do you mean? Now, now I'm not. I'm not sure actually. Okay, so once upon a time, we had already announced at the finals of GSL that it was going to be in Busan, right? And DRG, famous DRG, is short for Don Gregu, which yeah. is a part of Busan that he lives in. Right, right. That he's from, right? So it would be gigantic to have a player from Busan playing on the beach there against MC. And then he super choked against Seed and got wrecked. And then That's Seed right. went and, and like that we have three out worst here, final or four wonder something. It was like the most one-sided quick final. The sun hadn't even gone down. And yeah, we yeah, done. yeah. And it was like, oh, this was supposed it, it to be so. It cost us a lot of money to rent that out at the beach too. <laughs> that was just really bad. Yeah. Um. Okay, so hold on. It's a cannon rush, my I'm friend. Talking to you. He has a cyber next core almost done before he starts his first cannon. I'm watching DRG's face. DRG's like this. I can't believe this is happening to me. I think it's a good strategy. By the way, DRG's here. got this like thing over uh, under his chin, so it looks like he's like in a scuba diving outfit that he's yeah. playing in right now. He just doesn't have his mask on. So this is a little bit Hass esque. He has the Robo right up front there. You mean the, so yeah, yeah, yeah. He is going to be doing an immortal push, throwing down shield batteries as well. Look at that. It's spine time. Did I get wrecked? So this is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's you know, DRG's a little bit rusty. He's like, can I kill? No, I can't. Yeah. So that seems like it might be. No. Never mind. So uh, when we saw Haas do this, what you, what the, the idea is, you get a warp prism and an immortal. And uh, if you've watched any StarCraft at all in the last few years, you've seen how strong that combination is. And you just abuse the Zerg. Generally turns into like Ravager Ling Queen yes. trying to hold it off. Now he's actually going to get in here and attack this cannon. It's not utilizing the surface area correctly. You can get that with two Lings. And attack with two Lings, rather. Okay, so that's a little bit of a problem as well. You definitely do need this shield battery area. Bane Ling's next. Oh my god, here. it popped on the wrong side, Tasteless. Oh no. That is so annoying. He's like, get that thing out of the way. Really? He's going to do this? Yeah. All right. Use some of your shield out I guess. Yeah, why back not? Back up, back up. Gotta With keep those staggered alive. shots. Uh, yeah. It could still take some actual hull damage. Pop. Yeah, gets it. No problem. Bailing nest on the way right now. Here we go. Whoop. And now, now DRG now, gets to really feel the pain. Now the abuse really begins to happen because this is just such a strong combination. Oh, the links immediately, though. They run by. 
Banelings are being oh, made outside wow. of the natural. Yeah, Baneling bus coming up. Like, that That has a lot of potential here. There's only a cannon in the wall, right? This would be insane if he actually manages to win yeah. here, but I think there's just, just nothing back in. at home. Yeah, there's oh nothing. Oh, my God. What does Parting do from here? I think this he goes is to game two. Oh, my God. Okay, he's been busted. The links are going to spill into the main. DRG unfazed by this attack here. Links are being... Oh, no! Oh, my God. The probes fall. He does not have enough money for another Nexus. So he has to win with what he's got here, which is actually not completely undoable. Yeah, that's actually a good point, Artosis. It's a really good point. He's only got... How do you kill these immortals? With How Link do you Queen? kill what does not die? Especially doesn't die in this situation. Let's start targeting down some drones here. Trying to I just... almost feel like he should just get the hatchery here. The hatchery is just game over. Well, there's another hatchery down there, but... Because keep in mind, you have to kill their buildings to win the game. Yeah. It's a bunch of cannons and shield batteries yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, 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 this is God. weird. Everything's weird. And now a third immortal. This is the way StarCraft was meant to be played. <laughs> well, it's the way it's played now, so... Oh, my oh God. My yeah, God. You can't yeah, you can't, yeah, you can't get the drones over there. Yeah, party wins. Yeah, it oh, seems this that is way. so cool. It's too bad that he can't just lift off the spawning pool and put it in the corner, because that would be a draw. Uh, okay, so there's, let's see, what's left for the Zerg? Just the spine. Yeah, he can't kill that. That's too many batteries. He has some Banelings, so, like, maybe he's going to try for some unpowering type things. Yeah, but the one pylon on the far right is powering the cannons. Yeah. It's tough. I, I can't see a way that it's actually... He also doesn't have a lot of gas, Artosis. Yeah, I don't think he can actually do it. Uh... Wait, let's just see. Does this time out correctly? Now, you know, Immortals are not great against Zerglings. Yeah, the thing is, are. he could just go... Yeah, they're great against everything. What am I talking about? GG! What a game! Yeah, that was a wild one. That was cool. DRG, uh, I, I like the idea, but yeah, if you're going for Ling Baneling, you don't actually have anything that can ever kill the Immortals at that point. That was so sick. I like what he was thinking, but yeah, I mean, it, the Immortal and the War Prism is still there. Mm -hmm. It's still present. It could still do damage. Yeah. And that quick win is going to bring us right into game number two. Yeah, Parting becoming quite the good cannon rusher. All that time on NA really paying off for Parting here. <laughs> uh, so... There's, does it look like it's a scuba diving outfit? Yeah, it does a little no. bit. It does a little bit. A very, very big turtleneck. Um, New Repugnancy is our next map. That's a good cannon map as well. I don't know if we're going to actually see that, but it, I mean, it's parting. So anything's possible. Didn't we see him do like a proxy three gate cannon rush PvP here? Yeah, yeah. That was funny. I mean, the thing is, is that I, I wanted to say earlier on he might cannon rush, but I thought, ah, I don't want to. You know, typecast him too much, but he really just keeps on doing it. Uh, game two has loaded up. Let's get right into it. Right now, parting with a 1-0 lead versus DRG. The winner goes up against Kira in the final best of three in tonight's GSL Godass. Africa S2, Don Regu. Player one, party. All right, party, what you got? Do not know yet. Here, G, just the hatchery first. I will salute him if he cannon rushes again. <laughs> I do love casting those immortal rushes after the cannon rushes. It's so cool. Yeah, I, I enjoy it in general. I like very cheesy stuff. All right. Parting. From All Texas, right. where everything's bigger. Is that the expression? Everything's bigger I don't in Texas? Know. Maybe. Right? It could be. I don't know. Get off my property, I'll shoot you. What? It's one of those things. <laughs> Something like that. Something like that. 
Okay, he's doing it all wrong, Artosis. He's making a nexus and teching up. What, what, what is going on here? Well, you can fund more cannons that way. Oh, Clearly. okay. <clears throat> okay, so nothing too crazy as of yet. We just have to wait for that 7x core to finish to see what partings build of choice will be. I'm sure it will be very aggressive. There's no way we're going to see Oracle and Phoenix into Archon drop into three base Storm Immortal. That's not what we're going to see. It's going to be something other than that. DRG, this has been a weird day for him. First of all, he's finally back at a GSL. It was super exciting when we saw he, he actually qualified. Um, I'm really curious to see, you know, how many more players from the past will be able to come back and try to play here. Um, but it's definitely clear he was a player from the past. You know, so far he's been kind of manhandled in, in all of his games. He's lost the three rushes, right? Yeah. So is that really playing fair? Does that count? Uh, you, there are certain people who would say it does not count. Okay. <laughs> They're certainly out there. Now, I'm not the referee of this you tournament. You play the game the way it's supposed to be played. Someone else butts in. Excuse me, but I know as much as the pros, I just don't have time to play. The, uh, well, I tell you, parting maybe doesn't play the way the game is supposed to be played. It plays the way the game is played. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to pick this off, getting the Robo as well. More sentries. This definitely looks like he is looking to hit a quick push here. We'll see how quick, though. That's the thing. It's really hard to tell. Like, I cast all the games and watch, and I'm not sure what, how many Immortals he's going to move out with. That's kind of like the measuring stick, is how many Immortals when you move out, right? We've seen five on two base. We've seen three. Three, that's a common one. Yeah. Two is a common one. Sometimes the ones where they with go with one. zero, it sucks. They, no. I don't think anyone wins when they go with zero. It's like there is the one where you go with one and it's right uh, with a proxy robo. You really try to push in there. Okay. You just start attacking immediately. He's making an immortal though, so his chances here are going up. Okay, Twilight goes down. Is it going to be Glaives? That was what we've been seeing a lot of. Forge as well. So it can be plus one charge. Yeah, as the two Zealots get warped in, it feels a little bit more like that. Now, this could definitely be one where you take a third Nexus. Because it's going to be a little bit slow. The push yeah, continues to come out. This is the thing, too. Look at him walk across the map. Yeah. you got to respect it to some extent. What, right? was it, what was the name of the Overlord hero again? Yggdrasil. Yggdrasil? The World Tree. The World Tree. Okay, thank you. It's in Norse mythology. You should read that. Uh, what's it called? I think the book is actually called like Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. It's amazing. Is it? Good? I don't understand. Is it just him rehashing the old mythology? Or yeah, he just like wrote them for a more modern audience. Like you know, if you read some of these really old books, the wording is so weird that a lot oh, of people like, yeah, can't like get if you read it. Beowulf and it's just like yeah, oh, this is weird. Yeah, but yeah, it's an amazing book. Oh, actually, I actually think I'm going to take you up on that, Artosis. I think I will do that. I'll bring it in for you tomorrow if you want. Yeah, I actually might get on audio, um, but oh, yeah. Okay. Um, that works too. Yeah. Like that way, I don't have to read. <laughs> no, but um, no, I think I might listen out on the way to work. Then that's a good, good advice. Um, so this rush is starting here now. The dark shrine's coming, but with these links running underneath this, you can't warp in. You can't unload that. Dark shrine coming in is kind of neat. You don't normally see this ordering. Uh, if you go for dark shrine, a lot of times it is just the immediate archon drop. <laughs> Otherwise, it's like Supreme Lake game that you'll see the Dark Oh, how Shrine funny. He actually unloads the Immortal and walks it back. Yeah. <laughs> and then sends the Warp Prism out so he can warp in and pick up. Well, this is extremely tricky because I've never seen this done in a pro match where you go for the Immortal, right, with the Prism, and then you go to Dark you know Shrine because okay, it's so, so slow. Here's the thing is that you just don't expect DTs because yeah. you saw the Immortal. And, and so look at this. The, oh, my God. real trouble. Yeah. And, and, and DRG is just going to be like, what? Yeah. What is... You Why had an immortal, is there though. DTs here? Uh oh. Oh my god. Just you know, Harden is so smart. It's so sneaky. It, like I, the timing looks so bad. Like if this became normal, it would go away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this, <laughs> this is one of these one-off builds you can use against a good player, and it probably won't ever work again. Just, you're thinking, oh, are you gonna do that thing where you just like go DTs? I gotta say, I think we're, I think we're gonna. Hit a time here. Oh, oh my, my god. god. DRG shaking his head too. I think we're gonna 
Oh my god, look at the amount of damage. Anyways, let me try to finish this sentence. I think what's going to happen Sorry. is Zergs are going to start getting Overlord speed because just about every loss is exactly the same right now. And we have seen Zergs getting pummeled in GSL. Yeah, I, I, pummeled. I think you are 100% right. Every time they can't figure out what's going on. And the thing is, no one can figure out what's going on because there's been like, okay, so we're in group number seven right now. How many different builds have we seen? Like, how many times have we seen the same build is probably a better question. It's not that often. Like, everyone has their own little time and their own little thing. Okay, so Ravagers are coming now. Um, the Nidus the Nidus, up, actually, the Nidus is really good. The Nidus okay. is a great play. Oh, is he going to have it before that Changeling dies? This is funny. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Hero Changeling. Oh, now, is this going to be able to throw him off? The problem is that this is a serious push coming in here. I like that they're just still DTs. I really do. Look at the amount of damage. Seven kills. Are you kidding me? I don't think so, Artosis. Are you joking around, Tasteless, making jokes? Sorry. I know that esports is very serious. I Look at think that. I, I like the idea he of the, the Nidus, but this has gone on for too long. Oh, my God. DRG. DRG. Dead RG. DRGG Artosis. Yeah. This is a. Uh, well, look, he's. I Bye. guess he's actually got a lot of units. The harassment has been. Those are the brutal, same though. DTs, guys. Yeah, they are. These DTs are like the most legendary Protoss units of all time. They are pretty crazy. Zeratul and Zeratase right there. That's right. Zara Tace only does 39 damage, <laughs> so he, two shots a drone. It's really <laughs> annoying, actually. We had this whole thing. We, we did. Uh, we cast Heroes in the Dorm on, uh. on ESPN. As I was naming it. it was like not we were casting, but I was talking about uh, Zara Taste. <laughs> just renamed every. I renamed everything. Hero e into ETC tasteless. was E Tasteless C. It was all about picking your tastelesses and having them work together to take out the other side on the map. <laughs> Sounds like a great so game. Stupid. <laughs> Look how most of the jokes you make are just you're the center of the universe. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Uh, okay, but in so real life, too. <laughs> the uh, counterattack is going to happen. I think there's going to be so much that, that uh, Parting can utilize to try to hold this. I think TRG is making the best of what he has here. He's yeah. going to have a Nidus try to come here and help reinforce. But even with this many Ravagers, I think the number of force fields that you can fire out and then have to be destroyed and then you can fire them out again, I think that Protoss can carve this army up pretty nicely. He's still getting DT kills on the other side of the map, by the way. Uh-oh, this is a pretty good angle. Yeah, he does have a lot of Ravagers in here. A lot of those sentries are actually new, so he's not going to have as many force fields as this army would make you believe. And you can really tell by those two, which didn't really do much. He still has a lot of Immortals here, not using the Prism Juggle that much. Great micro so far, go. though. All those Immortals still alive, and we're starting to see this army get closed in on. Yeah, that's going to be it. And I'm wondering if DRG is going to tap out. or Okay, there it Man. is, GG. Tough first tournament back, but this happens a lot, right? You just came back. Right now, Zergs are having a very tough time in GSL. So I'm not surprised by the outcome. I just hope that DRG keeps with it uh, and, and comes back next season. This was a real treat, honestly, to have DRG back here. I know he's unhappy with those results, um, but this was cool. It's cool to see that he can qualify. I hope to see him again. And that means up next for our final match, Kira versus Parting. Don't go away. We're going to be right back.
If the Mona Lisa canvas ripped, I wouldn't care, cause I could picture you. If the Tower of Pisa finally tipped, well then you'd know how hard I felt. If the world stopped turning tomorrow If it all fell into the sea I'd let it sink to the bottom Cause I only care about one thing You know None of it matters as much as you matter to If the Big Bang Tower ceased to ring, it's okay, cause I could sing for you. If every flower went extinct, my heart would still be blossoming for you. 
If the world stopped turning tomorrow If it all fell into the sea I'd let it sink to the bottom Cause I Everything changed. I say the same through any heartbreak. My love will remain if the world stopped turning tomorrow. If it all fell into the sea, I'd let it sink to the bottom. Cause I only care about one thing. You know. No, none of it matters as much as you matter to me. No, none of it matters as much as you matter to me. Round of 32. Monster 2019 Champion. Mountain Dew GSL Season GSL 2 Codex Renaissance You're into that type of music? Most competitive 1v1 game <laughs> mm. Cure versus Party in the rematch Martin versus Cure This was really the only match that we had tonight that was close In the temple of GSL we pray Wow, you're good at this. Thank you. Were you ever a monk? I've been a monk all along, Artosis. Yeah? I know you're a Working hunk, but were you a monk? I'm a, I'm a hunky monk. How about that? Who do you want to have win? Be honest. Uh, I think parting is more fun up there. Yeah, me too. 16. I hate Cure too. yeah. Yeah. I just hate tearing players, man. Let's just get rid of all Let's get rid of all them. Okay, it's the same maps as before, the exact same that we had. It's a perfect rematch. Now, Partying had a lead, but ended up, uh, it, you know, slipping between his finger trips. How, how do I? Yeah, I'll start the game. I'm terrible. I'm terrible at my job. Start the game. I'm sorry, I can't outro anything. Jin Air Green Wings, Cure. Player one, party. What is well, I, I, occasionally I say this expression, I think I'm saying it wrong. What is it, it slipped between your fingertips? No. What is it? between your fingers. Is that it? Yeah, not your fingertips. It's not like you, you know, it's like if you have a bunch of sand in your hand or something, it would go in between your fingers. Yeah. Not in between your fingertips. No one just walks around carrying a bunch of things. Okay, so fingertips. it's the tips. That's what I'm what getting wrong. What are you holding wrong? your fingertips? Like something really hot maybe, right? Yeah. Like, I, yeah, it's not. Maybe a needle. Yeah. You don't something, want to hurt yourself. Something you have to be very careful with. You'd carry with your fingertips. Maybe you're making, uh, you're, you're, you're knitting. You'd be very concentrated in that, in that moment mittens. as well. Yeah. So it's like definitely, you're definitely. Hold my mouse with my fingertips. Ah. Mouse I, holding is an interesting thing. Yeah. I never thought about it until I saw like Razer made uh, like a, a couple graphics showing the way different people hold mice when they're playing. It's kind of interesting. Like anyone who plays StarCraft with their whole palm on the mouse. Who are you? I know. Your whole palm is Actually, on the mouse? Actually, it was does really. Your, does your hand need a nap? Why don't you yeah. Why don't you go give your hand a nap and then come back and play StarCraft? And you're really telling those, those palm, mouse palmers. 
face palm more like. Oh, they got served. They got served. Slammed. Dunked. Actually, it was really funny in early StarCraft tournaments. There was this player who was like really good, and he showed up with one of those keyboards that was split in the middle. Oh yeah, some players. Yeah, yeah what, just like what you have. In your we house. were like, everybody's looking at like what? Who was you that? Have, it was Wizard. Uh, I'm I just gonna expose him right now. Wizard had a. We got to the tournament. Everybody's like, wait, are you serious? No, he had a keyboard with two speakers on it. Is what he had. Oh I no, you're right. Him in no, 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 you're right. Oh my god, but who who was it then? Yeah, no, he had that ghetto keyboard with the. Yeah, he had two speakers on it. It's so weird. So in case he gets in a fight with his girlfriend, you know, he can go outside her apartment, hold the keyboard up, and play a song to try to get her to come out and take it back. There you go. A little bit of harassment going on. Did do the full wall, so hard to scout. Twilight and Robo coming up. Now again, guys, throughout all of today, Parting's played crazy games. Dark Shrine. Okay, he beat me to what I was going to get. To. What? He and is going to do something crazy again. He's showing that he's got so many different build orders and styles. It could be easy to forget because it was so long ago, but Party is the former world champion. Yeah. He, he won in 2013. He won the first real world championship. When we it were was in 2012. China. 2012, excuse oh. me. Uh, yeah, we casted him winning that in China. Yeah. Um, and it was it was crazy, man. Uh, but, you know, hes it's been a while, but he's back, and he's looking really good, and he's showing that he really does see Protoss in his own light. He always has. He's always played very differently from everyone else. Uh, and I'm excited to see what the future holds for him, because, like, for instance, look at this build, right? It's going DT and Charge. It certainly looks like it's going to be a two-base all-in. Just continually shading up here, just seeing what's what. It's hard for his opponent to know what the hell is going on. Yeah, Widowmind drop coming over. Over and over the same thing right there. That's what Parting wants, though. Parting, Parting's like a dog chasing a car. If those adepts got in, he wouldn't even know what to do with them. Oh my god. Okay, is that... Wait, that's wait a... does he have two prisms or one prism? I'm so oh. confused. He has two prisms now? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Why does he have two? Why not, Artosis? Yeah, that's a you great too. point. Yeah, well, apologies. because you're going to lose that first one, right? Oop. Yeah. I mean, he's so all in, why, why not just make two? Okay, he scouts what's going on, so that's really important. He has just got a turtle like crazy. Does he have a scan, though? Ooh, gets the, uh, the mine. You know, reducing Marines is actually maybe better than SCDs. Yeah, yeah, no, I totally agree with you. Now he can pick up, he can always go back in. Oh. He's gonna have DTs hitting two different locations. Only got or just with the same location. Sorry, guys, I don't know. He's gonna make archons. archons. He's just got, don't, don't listen to anything I say. I'll just say what happened afterwards. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> worst cast of my life. Um, so he's gonna try to drop inside the main again. Now the the position of these the, the factory and the barracks is really interesting. Yeah. But I guess he is gonna be able to wedge his way in here. I yeah. was wondering if this was gonna happen, but yeah, he can get in here, and then suddenly the archons are a lot harder for the SCVs to get surrounds on. Yeah. Sets up double prism, and now he's just killing everything. This is so crazy. Well, I don't think this is something that uh are practiced against. You're never going to surround that with SCVs. This is so funny. Ha ha, I'm what? laughing because it's so funny. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do? I'm, I'm going to look at Kira. Kira looks... Kira's not well, he should. He should look GG. confused right now. That was such a strange build, but I mean... Good on parting, I guess. Bow Look, yeah, down. You can see he's like, what? The new god of cheese is here. Gosh. Melt down your, your statues of your other gods and make a golden parting. Those of you who love chaos and cheese. Yeah. I don't even love know, seeing man. players who go, well, I'm just going to play a standard game and try to get ahead and use my upgrades and then get stronger tech in the end. No. No. That it's time is over. It's all about party now. Look at Cure. <laughs> Try to play a normal game. <laughs> Can Cure come back, though? Can justice be delivered? Ooh, and what is this music playing? Ooh, this is retro vampire yes, music. Man. Ooh, welcome to our haunted GSL.
Ooh, this is a great song. What song is this? And I just tell you the name of the song because yeah. I would know what the name of this song is. <laughs> God tastes this. It's a great question. Thanks. <laughs> We're going to go to game two on Kairos Junction. Right now, partying with a 1 0 lead. It's <laughs> for Elise Tasteless. That's what that one is. <laughs> Gin Air Green Wings, Cure. <laughs> Player one, Harding. It's a very interesting play that last game. Yeah. I'm having trouble even like describing what it was. It just, it got scouted a little bit late. It was kind of crazy. Well, it was I mean, funny I guess too because before stem, it's like you can't really kite them too well or anything. And it, it, interesting. It, it was interesting too, because he got the Archons right in the middle of the buildings. And you know, a lot of times it's, you know, the, the fail safe when you're getting rushed is to pull your workers. It's like if, if you know if that can't stop it, your workers with your army, you're probably just gonna have to leave the game. But uh, yeah, he gets the archons in, in between the barracks, and like the, nothing can get in there. It's uh, it was cute, and uh, you know the double war prism. Um, I, I'm really pleased seeing Parting uh, innovate in so many of these games. And mm -hmm. the thing is, he's showing enough different styles of builds and, and, and techniques that it's like you can know he's gonna do something weird, and it probably doesn't matter because you won't be able to predict it. You know. Yeah. It's a powerful thing to have up your sleeve there. We just, we haven't seen him get into the late game and play like a, a, a strong late game full of good decisions and building for an even later game. Which, I mean, a lot of Protosses don't do that particularly well when they are very aggressive Protosses, so maybe that's okay. I think in this meta it's totally fine at least. All right, take that gateway. <laughs> Reaper goes back out. That was a that was a kill shot right there. He yeah, right up in that gateway's face That's and pulled right. the trigger. Carved his name on the side of the gateway and left. You put a Reaper and then a heart around it. Yeah. And you put scouting. Nice. Reaper. Yeah. Loves scouting. The word's out. The Twilight Council coming here as well. There's a probe hidden down there at the bottom. That probe at 6 o'clock could be used to make one of those pylons, Artosis. You know those pylons Protosses are always making? Yeah, they do you make know? those a lot. They do power the buildings after all. Yeah. They scout stuff, too, and hide stuff. It's yeah. kind of neat. They can they warp, warp in there, in. too. I feel wow. like if you could figure out how to get rid of that, that energy from those crystals, Protoss would just be dead. You know, it's dark talking about nerfing, uh, you know, the, the prism and... Nerfing the uh, immortal, I say leave those the same. Just take away. Guys, I don't warp think gates. the I don't think the immortal strong enough. Just make make everything okay. out of the gateways, huh? I think they need to make that pickup distance even bigger. Is what I'm getting at. Well, you should just be able to you like siege it in your main and just like do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so now what we need is a hero unit warp prism. Think about that, Artosis. You never Warp. think of that, those units as the heroes. Warp Drazil? Warp Drazil, and he's cloaked too? He's cloaked like a mothership? Crazy. Yeah. And he gives cloaking to the things he's warping in. Yeah, exactly. So you think they're DTs, but they're yeah. not? He has Size Storm too. It's just like terrible. <laughs> it's like if you, you give a five-year-old. Like, huh? You warp in Archons? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Immortals too, no problem. Yeah, yeah. It's cloaked. You can't tell what's under there. Scans yeah. don't reveal it either. Yeah. <laughs> it's just invisible. It's <laughs> <laughs> like disruption balls coming yeah, out. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? It can cast disruption balls. You're like, I think it must be a Tempest under there that's hitting me. It's <laughs> really hard to say. I don't know. I hate this game. I've never played it again. Okay, Whoa, we've got the warp in. Proxy gateway as well to make it uh, quicker to get the, uh, the reinforcements there. Hold on. We're going to have the drop, though. Activate first. And I don't think Parting sees this at all. In fact, he's—he uh -oh. completely missed it. 
That is big right there. Eight kills oh, and man. gets away. Parting curses. Uh, not happy with that. As, oh, know, he likes to right attack, but he doesn't like to be attacked. <laughs> <laughs> Taste of your own medicine. Stalkers come Whoa. forward. Kira is really not in a good position for this. Look at that. All these units just coming up the ramp. The siege tank definitely not being utilized well. Great control here. Yeah. Lots well, of damage with this first this first uh, blink in. Okay. Hasn't even had to blink yet. Kills a lot. Look at that. Supply blocks him, kills six SCVs, a bunch of Marines as well. He sees that the siege tank hasn't been moved. I love the battery, too, coming back out yeah, there and cute. recharging. Definitely Harden worthwhile. is such an innovator. Seriously, it's so cool. Yeah, he built a gateway and a shield better on the side of the map. This guy's Einstein. It, sc it screams <laughs> bravery. It screams bravery. Oh, 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 oh my, god. my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Parting is, I guess, this is one of the most entertaining players it. I've ever watched play. I mean, like, looking at his reactions, he is experiencing every range of emotion on yeah. his face as this game goes on. Dark Shrine comes up. When behind or head or even, yeah, dark, shrine, dark Shrine, as they say, that's, you know the Siege Shake setup. That's what Nine Days said. <laughs> nine <laughs> that's Days. That's what Nine Days said. Oh, this. Oh, Wait. oh no. He, the what a weird clicks. blink that was. Yeah, that's. It's like, I just want I just want the Siege Tank to shoot me a couple times. Yeah. Well, I don't think he can get, he can get on that tank now. And this is, like, really well defended. Yeah. I feel like he's playing tower defense, but he's the mindless enemy that. <laughs> and Kira is like a really good tower defense yeah, player. Yeah. It's like, how are you going to get in there, party? He's like, I don't know, but I have to do it. Plants for zombies, but he's the zombies in yeah. this case. Yeah, it's very tough. He doesn't even have any bucket head zombies. Like, I, oh, yeah. He's those were just going to get wrecked. That's going to be it. Even if he breaks through this, the lawnmowers are going to kill everything. <laughs> Okay, DT's coming. I'm not clear on what the energy is. That's a is. lot of mules down there, so I bet the energy's low. Yeah. There's a turret in the main, though. That's no Parting good. Parting with unusual DT timings. The DT's coming in much later. A lot of times the, pro, the, um, the Terrans are just not factoring that in because usually there's a specific moment you're looking for the DTs to come in and do damage. And if you don't see it, then you don't bother trying to defend against it. So. Look at that scan. He's trying to cheat with that His scan. His cybernetics core is still there. Spinning, he's like, What? <laughs> I'm more confused than if I hadn't scanned. <laughs> yeah, I wish I hadn't scouted him. Air armor, stim 10 seconds out. This is not looking good for parting right now. What's it? The DTs aren't doing anything. And then he's gonna get Templar archives after you this. know what? I think he's gonna do is bleed DTs into this to stay alive. All right, one DT at a time, make him use a lot of scans. I don't think that's gonna work though. I don't think anything's gonna work. He is getting that charge upgrade, though. I heard that's pretty good. Oh, here they come. All right. Cure immediately pulls the SCBs. I don't see a scan here yet. One turret, though, in the main makes uh, DT harass impossible. Party might lose that war prism. No. Only the shields. Yeah, that one in the natural uh, goes down, but that was actually fantastic. It brought the army back and killed five SCBs. Okay, well, then he lost it, so that's not good. But the rest of it was... Pretty worthwhile. Storm's on the way. Kira is moving out right now, though. There is only two bases for parting, so he doesn't have to worry about losing his third. <laughs> yeah, the class is half full. Um, <laughs> Storm's still halfway done, so if, if Kira is fast enough, he can start hitting before Storm. And Storm is, I think, the only thing that would stop uh, uh, Protoss from dying right now. Okay. Getting to push. There's a prism on the way. Scan here. He sees just how weak this is. Oh, oh. the Templars. He sees those high Templars, so he knows that it is coming. Okay. <laughs> the Zealots still don't kill the two Marauders over there. Storm five seconds out. And he has the prism ready. Let's see those storms. Oh, what? Oh, five more probes go down. Jeez. Oh, man. Well, he's he's got to eventually use it. If he has no units left when he storms, that's not going to be any good. Storm doesn't do it alone. 
A scan there oh. takes on the DTs, but he does get one tank. Yeah, not too bad. This not is a bad. story of, you know, Parting just trying oh to survive. God. Oh my god, he's got so much. Yeah, there's Parting's no gonna way. get rolled here. Even Storm doesn't do this. Yeah. Even if he got all the perfect Storms off, there's so many Terran units that the ones that were in Storm would kill him. Yeah, he'd have to stim no everything down to no health and then run through the Storms. All right, we're tied up 1-1. Oh, I hope we get a par shot of Parting here. Yeah, you could. Oh, we just missed it. So many probes that would have mind drop. Yeah. All right, going to set three once again. Our only two series tonight to go the distance, Kieran Parting. So far, the results have been exactly the same as well, Artosis. Pretty sure I covered that, Tasis. Thanks. What's going to happen in game three? You think he's going to come back? Uh. Is Party going to make it? Well, I'll taste or is Kira just going to be like, look, I'm a stable enough player. I can I can outlast him. What are you doing with your jacket right now? I don't know. I, I, I kind of like halfway put it on because I thought someone was going to request a break. Because it's kind of hot up here with these lights, so I kind of usually keep it off. But now it's like kind of on one arm, but it's not on the other. I feel like you're, it, you're like a model in a commercial for lipstick or something right now. <laughs> the way that you're half wearing that yeah. on your arms. All right, I can take my jacket back off. We're going to load the game up. Let me take my casting blazer off. <laughs> Jin Air Green Wings, Cure. Big cheers for Cure here. Player one, Harding. A lot of support here for Party as well. Very hype audience here tonight. Yeah, well, they should be. These have, this has been an interesting group. I don't think that all the games have been great. There's definitely been a lot of one-sided games. But at least the Cure Parting series are really delivering. Parting has uh, actually used a lot of kind of weird DT timings. That's been one theme we've had from him, besides you know, doing a lot of crazies. But he has, he has done this thing where he'll send DTs at a weird moment that just seems too late kind of hope that the other player just isn't ready for this and you know th with the DTs they do damage so fast if you're not ready it's you know you're just going to be punished yeah well nothing's weaker than an expected DT oh yeah <coughs> so Reaper on the way Nexus after the Cybernetic score trying to delay that command center as much as possible lays it right up to just over 400 minerals Ooh. Get out of there. As the core finishes, we'll get to see what the tech is going to be. Again, Parting really basically refusing to play standard, but seeming to have a range wide enough that he's still introducing novelty in every game we've gotten the cast of his. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I guess, showing us that he doesn't need to go back to anything, you know, by the book so far. Well, he never did. He wrote the True. book before. Yeah. People were trying to copy him back in the day. Truthfully, at this level, you do have to have your own style. You can't just be a clone of someone else. Right. If you don't have any of your own stylistic things, you will never be a champion. Simple as that. Adept coming forward. So let's see. Again, I, I, I still want to see, is, is it possibly DTs? I feel like he might have gone DT enough times that this is not good anymore, but... Yeah, I don't think it's DT. I mean, I would guess that this is just going to be blink. You get really risky if you go for something else at this point, like a glaives or a charge. Not that parting is overly adverse to risk, but yeah. Goes for the Blink upgrade. No big surprise there. Now, Blink is uh, in the realm of pretty standard here um, in PBT. Yeah. We've seen this a lot, but it's going to be the later tech that I'm more interested in seeing from him. You know, Ooh, uh, we had Disruptors used uh, before with uh, against Cure. Actually, you know, let's not forget that in, in one of these games, because this is the second time these guys are playing, this is the rematch. There's... Um, 
It was definitely a game where Parting seemed to have the lead, but couldn't get the kill. He couldn't get the closer. And he attacked in too many times in a row, and his army got thinned out. And then Cure actually was able to take control of the game and come back and basically pound Parting. Um, and he, Parting wasn't able to recover. So, although the crazy style that Parting's bringing out is really cool, and his control usually has been good. He had some weird moments uh, in one of the earlier games. But overall, it's been quite good. I, I just want to see. If we do go into late game, the party can kind of play safer, or just not safer, but play more effectively, you know? Well, right now, this is kind of the most standard build we have in the matchup right now, in my opinion. Uh, going Blink, Three Gates, Robo. Yeah, nothing crazy at all. Yeah, it can kind of hold anything. You can actually get aggressive with this as well, if he wants to push across with the Observer. Uh, but it, I feel like he's taking a slightly more defensive stance with this. He did make that early sentry and everything. It got him some great scouts. Yep, goes into the support bay. I don't want to say Colossus Tech. I think it is, but uh, it does not have to be. Some stalkers going across the map. Good to keep some pressure on. Yeah, this Raven going to be coming out soon. And uh, seeming like we're just going to have a lot of the same ideas so far that we had in the previous series actually coming. Yeah, and Raven can obviously be very good against Colossus. Disable those during your push. Also, I guess that's a bad idea in general since there was, there was weird DT stuff going on. Just having a Raven oh, out yeah, just makes true. that really easy to handle. That is definitely true. You sort of have your bases covered with that there. Mm -hmm. Not going to get a lot done with this. I don't think he expects to. He's going to get like a unit. Yeah. yeah. He'll have to repair that Colossus. What Colossus? Oh, Cyclone. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry, guys. Thermal Lance coming. And it is going to be that Colossus play. I was really, really wondering mm. if, if it could have been the Disruptors. Now, you know, again, because it's a rematch, the tech, you know, if you scan and see that, it's possible that Cure even thinks it's going to be um, Disruptors. Yeah. Yeah. Disruptor, I think, is a weaker choice overall because a really good Terran like here could dodge the disruption balls. It's just not a steady source of damage. It's only burst. Yeah, it requires very specific micromanagement as well. Where like a Colossus, if it's a kind of in the fight, it's going to help. It's going to do damage. Yeah. Yeah. Much longer term unit. Um, okay, so right now Kira is making a lot of units. He is going to be moving out. He's got the three racks. Yeah. It, he starts the third CC here, but like he's got to get out there and pressure, I think. Yeah, I think the third CC is just the excess of minerals, but he definitely has enough to come out on the map and really do some damage. So yeah, these stalkers, let's see how he does. They need to slow him somewhat. The Raven is a little bit dangerous here, right? Because his stim finishes and combat shields and plus one and all that. Uh, if the Colossus are disabled for that battle, it gets kind of tough for Parting. Yeah, and he's not really buying that much time over here. Now, the infantry army is going to rotate in towards the center right. Looks like he wants to move in and try to hit from 3 o'clock. Now, this is kind of cool by Parting. He's going to come in here and try to hit from behind. Yeah. Oh, he backs off. That I pylon thought he, he had set up is really interesting, too. That allowed him to come in from behind and maybe maybe do some damage. But CZ's coming now. Gets into position. He has charge. Yep. Again, the Raven wants to disable the Colossi, and then the Stim comes in, and he tries to smother the Protoss with damage. Yeah, without Colossi, his army definitely can do this. He's got a much stronger army without those. It's tricky, though, because if you if you kind of bring everything forward right now, oh, he's holding this position and sending out two medevacs. So this, this could go very well or very poorly. Here he goes. He's actually going to jump in on top of him, disables okay, a Colossi. Okay, here we go, here we go. Protoss has got to run. I think Parting meant for exactly this to happen. He knows that he has, like, if another group of units came over here right now, that would be really terrible for him if all the units attack at once and the Colossi get disabled. So he did it when he could. He like kind of forced some of the disables out. So he's going to try to come into the main instead. There's just not enough stalkers here. We've got to see when the warping rounds are, if he can Ooh. actually warp more in and try to help out. By the way, not bad. Maybe going to get this tank. Meanwhile, that drop happening in the main. Oh, man. Looks like Parting would definitely win this main fight, but the drop in the main base starting to get some probes. Not sure exactly what else is doing. Warping of Zealots should help to clean that up, though. Oh, some oh, very man. good mines. Very good.
Well, he drew him back. Again, three bases to two. The longer that we have this situation in a PBT, the player with less bases is, you know, in trouble. Even though I do will say that Taren has a good army. Yeah, it, it is solid. He can take his third. He has a command center for it. Mm -hmm. Starting to get into Liberators here as well. We'll see exactly what his plan is with that. We've got Psy Storm coming here for uh, Protoss, so that's going to be very helpful, especially when the waves get huge. Oh, so sick. Yeah, good move right there. Um, yeah, when the when the Terran has just huge armies, getting some good Psy Storms is, is ideal. On this map, there's so many angles you can have the Templars walk into. It's very difficult with the limited scope of the screen for every player to see you know, what's coming where. Okay, sets up very defensively right here with his Liberators. Speed Prism on the way. Kind of interesting. Psy Storm as well, so he's going to have those two sources of Splash. Siege tanks still being made here by Cure, which I find kind of interesting. I think defensively at this, this time they're still quite strong. Not sure about attacking so, with them, though. Yeah, Protoss is going to come out again. Now, Protoss has the lead with the fourth base coming. Uh, and, you know, you... Oh, hold on a second. Is that Templars? What's what's in there? Oh, I think it's all. So seen, okay, I'm sorry. We've seen storm drops used occasionally here. Yeah, that is true. Um, and so now you have this warp in coming. Now, we got to see how much is actually going to be pulled away. We have a drop coming in um, to try to deal with the majority of this. Um, Let's try and get that Ghost Academy so hard. Oh, look at this. Okay, three ghosts are coming. All right, he's actually going to save the Ghost Academy. Yeah. How about that? Ooh. <laughs> actually committed quite a bit. And yeah. It looks like he wants to hit now. I don't know if that's right. I guess yeah. you can just hit the edge here with your Claw Sign and Stalkers. Yeah, I think you can try to like hold position this. Nice storms. But ultimately, Parting is chased away. Another drop over here in the natural. Seems like uh, the Speed Prism and doing some work at least. Keep, keep in mind, guys, that... Um, oh, hold on. By the oh, way, bad. parting this game, showing us this is about as normal as you can really play, right? Right. He played Blink into Colossus, and he's oh. going up towards Tempest oh, is he right go now. Oh, forward. His Templars are not in a good spot. Well, oh, I guess there's not enough infantry over here. He's going to wait and keep it back. Ooh, good storm right there. Really Keep it right. some Parting's ghosts. on four bases. We have a Terran on three. Oh, look at this. He's going to try to uh, kind of wiggle his way over there uh, into the natural, but you can see the Liberators are going to make that possibly uh, an undoable move. Yeah, I think he's got to back up from there a little bit. You know, he's still continuing to fly around here, getting these warp ins. Oh, those wow. Are... Just barely gets all those oh, out. Wow. That's going to be a lot yeah. more damage happening there. Really is. Now even the anti-armor missile wears off with his you know, main army, continues to poke at the edges there and just pick anything off that he can. I like Parting's army rotating around and boxing the Terran. Yes, I like it a lot. When it's, you're sitting defensively like that, you yeah. have to keep on resetting where your Liberators are. Yeah, it, it's just a lot more mechanically demanding for the yeah. Terran to try to reorganize Liberators, um, you know, siege tanks, everything else. I tell you. When, they, when this Colossus group can just stay together and kind of come in, look for an opening, fire, and then back up. Harding's playing a very standard game very well right now, Tasis. Yeah. He is showing so much range tonight. A lot of very aggressive plays, a lot of cheeses, but also showing that he's actually able to back it up and and play this kind of more normal style. His opponent's defending too well. It's like, okay, well, I'll macro. I'll get the good unit set. Finally, this War Prism's going to be killed off. This War Prism lasted forever in this game. <laughs> Protoss maxed Ooh. out. This would definitely be a moment we could see an attack oh in there. That God. was so crazy that he actually did that. He got two Liberators. Oh, I thought he targeted the Vike or the the Raven and it hadn't died. I was like, what oh. is going on here? Wait, did, 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 did he did he actually do that instead? Did I miss no, something? I think you're right that he okay. did target two Liberators, but it looked like he targeted the Raven. The Raven immediately ran away. Again, Protoss getting bigger and bigger. A lot more ghosts have been brought out here. So EMPs are going to be very necessary to try to disable the um, uh, Templars. Yeah, good EMP right there, actually. It's a big chunk of the army. The Tempests are going to be coming out. And as Tempests come out, either you switch into Vikings or you start actually pushing a bit. Right now, Parting is max out. I'm not sure what he has defensively at home, but sometimes in situations like this, if the Protoss is maxed out, it's a little bit hard for them to defend if you harass, just with a small group of units. 
Something like two medibacks takes a lot of supply from Protoss to clear effectively. My biggest concern is just parting over extending here. I think as long as he doesn't fully commit under the Liberation yeah. Zones, he'll be fine. Any moves like this is fine. Taking a shot every now and then from Liberation Zones is fine. But like a full attack into it, that's a mistake. Now look at this. He's actually just sitting on his Tempest. Yeah. I love this. I think this is brilliant. Fight with this for now, and then eventually there's going to be this protracted battle where you're utilizing Tempest to knock down everything. Also, but you the, don't need to do that until you have a critical mass. The area over where the third is, you could put Tempest there so easily and just chuck shots in oh, there yeah. and, and really do a lot of damage. And I love this coming up here. This should be too vulnerable. He should be able to come in here and do a lot of damage. Wow, really respecting those Liberators, though. Ooh, oh, the he's harassment. so good. I feel like Kyrie wow. is slowly going to fall apart here. Harding's playing really well. Yeah. Really, really well. Now look at this. He's going up to seven Tempests. That's crazy. There's not a single Viking out there. All right. Well, no, there's not a single Viking. There's two. Okay, Terran now going to move out. You know, these Colossi, they're going to take a lot of Ooh. shots here. Yeah, I, I don't think that there's, like, a lot of other options for him right now. He definitely has a good oh, bio ball. I think fighting but... him in the bottleneck is not a bad idea at all. Terran setting up. Terran's committing. But here come those Tempests. Here come those Zealots. Still, he's trying to pick oh off everything God. he can. The Tempest uh, damage output is not that great against the infantry. It's really about the splash damage. He has these ghosts in here. Maybe if he can stop those size storms, he'll have some sort of chance, but his army's getting so small right now. Yeah, no EMPs on that just yet. A lot of this supply, by the way, for army is in the Tempest. So, overall, maybe there's still a little chance here for Kiri. He does have that fourth base up now. Bringing Not that these, many workers, though. Bringing these Zealots up here. Oh, gosh. Zealots charge down the tanks. Yeah, it's a bit too much. He's going to start losing these ghosts at the front of his army. Tries to pull him back right there. Tempest chipping away. He's going to run through Storm every time he tries to engage okay. them. He's chased him away. Now this expansion's vulnerable over here. And I think Protoss is going to try to hold the ground over here. He can either try to push up into the main, um, or he can actually uh, you know, filter a few units over there, too. I, well, I guess it's going to be the third base. I thought it was actually going to be the natural, though. I get some more good size storms off. More gateway units coming down. I think this is you know, just about the end here for be Kier. Between the, temp uh, the uh, Tempest and the Stalkers, there's no way to really retreat. And Cure has basically lost this game. We should be seeing him tap out as Parting is going to move on to the round of 16. There it is, GG. Wow, a big victory there cool. for Parting, showing yeah. superb macro play. Played the end. Uh, Every every portion of that game used so many different strategies today. Is Parting going to become a contender again? I like that, Parting. Oh, look at here, man. Dude, this is... Okay, so Jyn Air Green Wings have been dominating. Dominating StarCraft II for years. Yeah. Like, almost no dents in their armor. This season, only Trap has made it through. And we only have SOS left. How crazy is that? So, they are so they sick. win what or are in the finals of like everything for GSL for years. My God, it's crazy. We're Keep gonna go as well. We're gonna go to that interview. Since four years, party made it to the round of 16. Congratulations. It's been a long time since you made it to the round of 16. How do you feel? Oh man, I don't know what to say. Uh, I used to be here so many times. Just like three meals a day. And after I came back, I practiced really hard. I was desperate. But I made a lot of mistakes. I even threw a lot of games where I was in the lead. And after those kind of games, I actually had thoughts like, Maybe I should give up. <laughs> Even today, I had rough moments. But MC came down here. And he actually helped me get through my mentality, mental, mental state. Yeah, 
차분하게 하라고. Harding, I know you're good. Just, I know you're really good. Just be patient, be calm. And that's what he said. And after he said that, and I think that's that's exactly what the reason why I actually won today. 보시더라고요. 그때 졌으면 안 됐다고. 아 이렇게 김 장민철 선수까지 이렇게 도와주셨다고 했는데 생각을 하셨던 것 같아요. 어 솔직히 이, 그, 이번에 경기를 봤던 선수들도 다 제욕을 했을 거예요. 이거를 어떻게 지냐 이사가. A lot of players watching my games, I think. 사람이냐 이런 말을. Yeah, I think they typed a lot of bad words in the chat because you literally cannot lose those kind of games. That's how I played. 성격도 급하고 빨리빨리 끝내고 싶어하는 성향이 강하고. A style of rushing sometimes, and I do want to just finish the game sometimes. I think that's what made my mistakes in that way. But even though, even though it had happened, we had some big widow minds. They're talking about the the main. The natural was okay, but I was trying to be human, you know. 뺐는데 갑자기 전멸 컨트롤 한 사이에 포브가 네 마리가 Having some blink moments and I lost four pro. And then I was thinking, ah, damn it, maybe I can't make it today. 그래도 오늘 정말 강력한 테란 전기들을 많이 준비해서 오신 그런 준비성이 보였습니다. 이 최종전 일 세트에서도 보여주셨던 그 분과 비슷한 타이밍. 와그 정말 강력한 거예요. 그 비디 소개 좀 해주세요. 어 사실 제가 만든 건 아닌데 최적화는 타이밍. 저만의 스타일로 만들고 하긴 했는데. 네. 그 아이 중국 팀의 IG 소속의 짐이라는 친구가 있어요. And, uh, there's 네. 그 a player called Jim from uh, China, IG. 그 친구가 and I've been friends with him for a long, long time. And he always says, I made this build. You should try it. And if you try it, you win. And he showed me this one. And I actually thought it was really creative. So, yeah, so I, I used it. So that's kind of the mind game. First game, I had the... I had the all in on in the main, and then saying I and then to the natural in the set too, and then I I made the opponent think, okay, he's gonna go for the normal game, he's gonna go really rich, and then you go for a surprise attack. 아 기분이 좋으실 것 같은데 확실히 아까 말씀하셨던 것처럼 전성기 때는 16강 항상 올라갔어요. And of course your days back in the days you used to be in the round of 16 all the time. Even the group nomination, it was just yours, the entire thing. And I'm pretty sure you might be a little nervous for going into the group nomination. I used to be, I used to be there all the time. And fans, staff, they were all cheering for me. I don't exactly know if they're the same. Long time ago, I had the skills and I could just say whatever I want, but now I think I should be a little more humble these days. I think we can check that out in the group nominations. And of course, there will be a lot of fans cheering for you. Final words. I, I stream. A lot. And the expectation from the fans, I'm pretty sure it's really high. But I show them dropping out from round of 32 all the time. And it was also it was guilt tripping me all the time. And those kind of feelings were really tough. So I'm gonna take some time off for. I took some time off for streaming, and I was I was okay at Super Tournament, and I'm gonna do better in the round of 16. Congrats again for making it to round of 16 parting. Thank you, G Class. Parting has spoken. All right, guys. Uh, tomorrow and the day after, we have ASL. So join us for StarCraft One casts. Here's our results for today. Parting and Dark survive. Yeah. The old school and the modern school, whatever you want to call it, uh, have moved on. DRG is dead, but I hope to see him again in future matches. Yeah, I, I hope he makes it in again next season. This was a tough one. Zergs are struggling a lot right now in GSL. They're just falling left and right. And uh, even great players like Rogue, for instance, out. Yeah, that's uh, so weird. Yeah, I think it's like, what, Sue and Impact and um, 
dark, of course, tonight. So we're missing like Solar and Rogue and Lee Knock. It's it's tough. A lot of them being eliminated. So you know what? I think DRG can make a better showing next time. Well, look who it is, Young Special. Yes, indeed. With SOS Ragnarok and TY, yeah, I think so. You better be here on Saturday. That's an exciting group. I don't know why this is. It's like Scarlet's always in groups with Keen and Hero. And why does Ragnarok Special have, have a never... beret on? What is that about? That's a regular hat, buddy. That's not a regular hat. That's a beret. All right. <laughs> well, what, can I, what, what do you mean regular hat? Like it's a, a regular hat. He's lifting a brim up. No. Wait, yes. hold on. <gasps> okay. It is. Sorry, it's dark, guys. It's OK. No. I need glasses. It's Ragnarok. Uh, that's, it's an exciting group. Special and TY in the same group once again. Good friends that, that practice a lot together and talk yeah. a lot together. And then SOS. Can another Gen Air player make it through? They normally dominate all these tournaments. So uh, it's going to be a fun night. It's going to be good. Fun, fun day, actually. It's going to be on Saturday during the day. KSL tomorrow. Join us on the StarCraft channel on Twitch. KSL on Friday. And then we're back doing GSL. And we went through, or we will have gone through, um, after Saturday, all of the round of 32. Yeah, that's pretty That's wild. crazy. Which we normally, it takes like a month normally to do that. Yeah, it does. Um, and on that note, that's all the time we have. Thank you so much for joining us. We love you guys. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Make it count. I must practice stories. Next, GSL Season 2. Renaissance.